Do you hear this music in your dreams? So yesterday's investigation was uh, a little better than uh, the one before it. So there still is a, a, a variance with um, how interesting they are, which makes sense. It's just uh, in general, I think they've gotten a bit dull as the games have gone on. I hope they're better in the, in the uh, later games. What do the later games even look like? What's what's the one after Trials and Tribulations? Is, is it Apollo Justice? Eat your hamburgers, Apollo? Did you roll John Lee? No, I did not roll John Lee, happily. I might accidentally get him because I'm trying to get the, the fire guitar player and so far on that banner I've gotten Razor, another Barbara, and another Ice Claymore user and still no fire uh, person, so I really don't like, um, I don't really like want Z Zhongli. Apollo Justice? Ace Attorney Apollo Justice. Alright, what does it look like? Oh, it kind of just looks like more of the same. Oh, okay. 3DS? Or is that... Is that a later one? Oh, it looks a bit better. Why is Phoenix wearing a, a teal beanie hat? Man, Phoenix looking pretty fucking handsome, like, what the fuck? Alright. I feel like I forgot to do something. Game Awards stream next week? Not sure. Maybe. Um, if you don't follow me on Twitter, uh, I played Ghost Runner, and I did a tweet about it. Ghost Runner is a first person, um, I don't know if it's cyberpunk, because I don't really understand what cyberpunk is. Like, uh... <laughs> I think I think uh, cyberpunk is just has just become the go-to for uh, kind of um, gritty sci-fi. You know what I mean? Like the, there's not much punk in a lot of the cyberpunk, but like yeah, we'll see. Anyway, um, yeah, I played Ghost Runner. Uh, pretty short game. Um, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Uh, it's it's rough in a lot of places. Uh, the movement is not that refined. It's not as snappy as it could be. Uh, but the trade-off for that is that um, you have a lot of freedom to get around the areas in ways that you might not think. So a lot of these kind of games are very uh, context sensitive. They're very like you can only do things that the game has, has allowed you to do because they've set up like routes around the levels. Uh, Ghost Runner is not like that. Ghost Runner lets you approach things in many different ways. Um, not There are lots of walls in Ghost Runner that you can wall run on that you don't think you can wall run on. I'm not sure if that's a glitch actually, but uh, you can do it. Uh, you can get to places with creative use of game mechanics uh, and it, it was a pretty good time. So I recommend that. It's sort of like a first person Katana Zero with a mix of uh, Celeste and uh, Mirror's Edge. Uh, a little bit of Titanfall 2 in there as well, but with uh, with sword melee combat instead of um, 
instead of uh, guns. You die in one hit, and uh, when you die in one hit, you come back. There's like frequent checkpoints and stuff, and uh, yeah, it's pretty good. So I recommend that if you uh, if you are looking for a game that's sort of like in the same cyberpunky area as 2077 uh, to tide you over until next week, then um, then I would suggest checking that out. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Ghost Runner had a ton of collision problems. It was pretty BS. Yeah, um, a lot of hitbox problems. A lot of um, lot of little problems here and there. I wonder if they uh, rushed it out a little bit. It, it missed its last month of checks or shit uh, because they wanted to get it out before Cyberpunk came out. Which you know, like, holy shit! Like, what what a fucking roller coaster that must have been for them. <laughs> No, we're not gonna make it. No, no, we are. Oh, no, no, we're not. Oh, no, it's late again. We're fine. Oh, shit. Okay, so, uh, I, uh, think that it could have used a little bit more, but, um, like I said, the, the trade off for that kind of roughness and, and how, um, it doesn't, it doesn't always work properly. Like, sometimes, uh, you're, you're jumping off a wall and it just doesn't do it. Um, is that you have a lot of freedom and, and uh, more than you typically do in a game like this uh, to get around and stuff. And you, it's frequent checkpoints, right? And there's not really any penalty for dying. So, yeah. Did you try Sakuna of Rice and Ruin? No, not yet. No. Do I'm very interested in that, though. Do, 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 do. Uh, thank you, Nomifit, for the resub. Bouncy Bob for some bits. And General Shepherd, not General Shepherd for the resub. Thanks so much. Do you guys hear Oscar Isaac is going to be playing um, Solid Snake in, in the Metal Gear Solid movie? So, um, what this means to me is that they're going to they're gonna scan Oscar Isaac and they're going to make a 3D model of him and they're going to put Snake's clothes on him and then they're just going to play all the cutscenes from the game. And there you go, there's, there's the Metal Gear Solid movie. It's a full rack of fashion magazines and they're all in French. Did I turn music down? I did, it's minus 18, okay. All the clothes in there are absolutely atrocious. Some of them have been circled in red. I really hope Mr. Armstrong is not thinking of buying those. Uh, so we're gonna possibly do a, um, a shorter or longer stream today, depending on how and how it goes. If we're close to the end of the chapter, we will push forward, uh, but I don't wanna go any more than two hours at most. Like I would prefer only one hour over. Uh, but if um, we, we are done really fast, I don't know how long the chapters are. If they're all the same length, then I don't think we can get it done today, but we'll see. Then uh, we will, um, then we'll stop early. Uh, so here's a quick recap for yesterday. Uh, Maggie Bird has been found guilty of murder, of poisoning someone at, the, at this restaurant that she works at. Here's where it happened. Uh, she poisons um, this person, Glenn Elg, who is a palindrome. Uh, palindrome motherfucker. Anyway, so uh, she saw someone poison him and the silhouette of the person that poisoned him looks suspiciously like Phoenix and then someone impersonated Phoenix uh, as her defense attorney and um, no one checked to see if it was Phoenix. So Phoenix has gone down as, uh, as uh, with a failure for failing to defend Maggie Bird and now they're doing a retry re retrial because maybe they figured out that Phoenix wasn't actually the real um, uh, Phoenix. Uh, uh, we've met the imposter. He he does kind of look like Phoenix in terms of silhouette, but uh, he's not on this list right now, so I can't show him to you. Sorry. Um, he he's like orange. It's kind of weird. He's like Kiru Phoenix. Um, so this is the chef who is my top suspect right now. Uh, so this chef is the person who uh, runs the restaurant, but he his food is terrible, and he has just kind of just claimed Maya as the new waitress that that works here. Um, and she's here now wearing this. 
Uh, the other characters that we've seen so far are this guy who is a pervert and he likes to come to this uh, restaurant because of the, the, the super, super revealing clothes that the waitresses wear, which is just like, you know, like whatever. Uh, what else? I think I think I can't go any more summary than that because the game will probably recap everything and that's all you need to do to go up to speed. Uh, no one else saw the person that Maggie Bird saw. Maggie Bird says that someone poisoned his coffee or, or, or tea or whatever it was. I think it was coffee. And no one else saw this other person in the restaurant. Now, that could be because there's some shenanigans going on or it could be because they have partitions and they just forgot that there were partitions. Uh, there's also this creepy... Um, creepy uh like wednesday adams looking creature that's been here uh and i don't know when she's gonna come back or not uh my window's open by the way so um if you hear some noise sorry i just want to let it cool down a bit in here because it's hot here today thank you for the bits catfish 467 and thank you for the resub uh bruce kilfist thank you uh so one last thing before we get into it. Uh, 2077 is coming out on Thursday. December 10th, right? You can play Cyberpunk on December 9th instead of 10th, depending on where you live. Depending on where you live, Best Buy might have sent your copy like a week and a half early. So you might be playing it right now. Um, so yeah, I think we're still going to do a first impression stream on, on the 10th or the 9th, if we can play on the 9th. So we'll see, uh, that's still planned. So if we're not done with Ace Attorney 3 by then, which is very likely, uh, then we'll just delay it by a day. Uh, and, and then we'll come back to Ace Attorney 3, um, after we play one day of, uh, Cyberpunk 2077. So that is, uh, that is still the plan. Shit, why did we come back here? We wanted to show... We just found out that, that he's in debt, right? About this, sorry, Nick. Or did we want to... Oh, no. I forgot what we were doing. half a million dollars pal oh you're the one who told us that okay hold on so what did we do last time we went and spoke to the old man after we got the debt thing from from uh from gumshoe and then we used all the inf we, we gave him the the what looks like green nail polish to gumshoe but it's not because it doesn't have a smell and then we used the paper we got back from him this uh in order to know this right because of the he did handwriting analysis on it we used that in order to uh get through his psyche locks and we found out he likes to go go to the restaurant because of the waitresses and then he kind of not locked us down S no sports paper is what we had what the fuck was it that we got what information did we get from him Hey Charlie, how's it going? Charlie, a quite decorative plant. He's sort of a keepsake, something to remember Mia by. Sure, the office is a mess, but I never forget to water this little, little fella. Okay, so that's gone. Okay, there's no one around, so I have to present something to somebody. What, what have I got that's new? Oh, is that old man? Is he still feeding the pigeons? Yeah, he fed me as well. I got a bunch of those seeds in my eyes. Oh, ouch. Hey, Maya, would you mind coming with me for a while? Huh? Me? Why? There's something I really want to ask that old man. Sure, okay, I'll just get changed. No, hang on. Can you go like that? I guess. Hmm, okay, I think that, uh, that should have just been the dialogue option, not a present option, but okay. Um, sir. 
Humph you again. Hmm. Well, well. I see. Uh, Nick, his eyes are burning into me. It's okay. I think it's going pretty well. Ka! Huh? You're still just a little child. Run along and play on the slide, alright? Play on the slide? Ugh, we were so close. Just a little more and he would have spilled. Hmm, ha, hmm, hmm. Pigeon, hmm, ka. Well, I know, I know a way to make her, you know, look older for you, bro. Don't worry. How can we crack this guy? Um, excuse me, please. No. Quiet, can't you see I'm feeding the... No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Well, if you don't mind, sir, I'd really love to talk with you. Yes, yes, yes. Of course, certainly. I'm Victor, Victor Kudo. Alright, even from beyond the grave, wow. About the Institute. Does Mia know that she's hot? You mean the man who died after drinking the Javachino? It's like he's a different person. It was quite shock even for me. He was a strange looking boy. The girl took a ja the Javachino over to him, you see. And was the customer alone? Definitely, he was the only person on the table. Then he took one sip of his Javachino and, and, and he said something like, Rog, and then collapsed, dead. Oh, how terrifying. You're so good at listening, aren't you? I'll tell you anything, whatever you want to know. Hee hee hee. He certainly seems to be telling the truth now, but it looks like Mr. Kudo didn't see this other man either. Trey Ben. Do you like the food at Trey Ben? She's being really minxy right now. Well, of course, I'm really quite a sophisticated man. I was a young businessman once, you know. I set up a casino in London. Really? How interesting. Eating the food at that restaurant really takes me back to my days in France. What a lovely story. London's in England, not France. Oh yes, France is wonderful. I'd love to show you around the city sometime. It's too much. I can't take it. I want France. Ha ha ha. What? I can't believe Mia's laughing at the guy. Sigh. You visit Trebian a lot, don't you? Of course, I mean, yes. I'd like to come and see you there. He 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 he. Really? Oh, you flatter me so. Wait, doesn't he realize it was just like this? Does he think it's a different waitress, or is he just so stunned by what happened, or like. Whatever. Thank you, Gyo. The owner would be delighted to welcome you, I'm sure. Be careful of that chef, my dear. The chef? You mean Mr. Armstrong? That's right. The man's an ex con. He, he's an ex-con. That's fine. Whatever did Mr. Armstrong do? Oh no, those eyes. I can't take this. Mia's really got this guy eating out of her hand. He steals things from his customers. From his customers? Gloves, handkerchiefs, little things mainly. Mostly to do with hands. He's a pilferer. So you better, so you be careful around him, my dear. Are you sure about this? Of course, he was arrested for it once. I was there when it happened, having my Javachino. He really is a regular. Let me write you a little haiku about it. Please don't. A haiku? A Japanese poem. It'll explain all you need to know about that chef. Convicted before, a wicked man or woman. Repeat offender. Victor Kudo. Michael Scott. If he takes anything again, you let me know. If it's not too expensive, I'll buy you a, re a replacement. Poor guy, he couldn't do enough for Mia. Okay, Phoenix. Alright, back to hell. That's about as much as I can do to help. Thanks, Mia. We got some really important information thanks to you. Honestly, I can't believe Maya called me for something like this. I mean, it works. Do, 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 do. I guess it's about time to wrap up today's investigation. I had enough of being a waitress? Yeah. Plus, no one came to the restaurant. Ooh la la, Mademoiselle Maya, no. How can you leave me like this? I'm sorry. That reminds me. Mr. Armstrong had a psyche lock or three, didn't he? I'm going to have to break those. Yay. Mr. Armstrong, 
I hope you won't mind, but I'd like to have another word with you. I sure hope that the game isn't bringing it up before we don't have the evidence to break them. Volunteers. Volunteer? Volunteers? Okay, of course. All right. Maggie's motive. What is happening? I do not like this horrible feeling. I have to know the truth. What happened to that, that day? Nothing. I wasn't even here. Alors, alors, I will confess everything. Just don't hurt me. Huh? Well, that was a new world record. It was a lottery ticket. A lottery ticket? A lottery ticket? The man who died here had a lottery ticket for half a million dollars. Half a million? That's exactly how much you're in debt for. Oui, but after La Incident, this ticket... It disappeared. The ticket disappeared. This was the motive that La Prosecution gave for Maggie. They said that she poisoned the man to get the half a million dollar lottery ticket. Why didn't you tell me about this sooner? Mys, allures, you've been trying to hide this information about the lottery ticket from me, and I want to know the reason why. No, monsieur, you doubt me, but I have confessed to you everything I know. Mr. Armstrong. Available for voice acting, by the way. The half a million dollar lo lottery ticket, I think I know who took it. I think the winning ticket was stolen by this person. Um. Okay, well, it, it, could, it could be anybody. It could be anybody. Mr. Armstrong, I believe there's a very high pro, pro, pro there's a very high probability that it was you. High probability means that it's still room for doubt. Wow, that is one piercing scream, even for a man like him. My por por qua me moi moi my por qua moi why you <laughs> no evidence? <laughs> I am not master mask. I'm not the kind of person who steals the property of others. Sorry to disappoint you, Mr. Armstrong, but I have evidence to the contrary. I resent to you proof that you have stolen from others in the past. What is this? A poem? Oh, Monsieur, you know me so well. I adore poems. Please read it and put some feeling into it. Convicted before, a wicked man or woman, repeat offender. What a shit poem. I'm sorry to have to bring it up, Mr. Armstrong, but you have been arrested for stealing from your customers before, haven't you? Le mensonge, you are the liar. You deny it? Do not make la false accusations, s'il vous plaît. S'il vous plaît. So, do you have any, any any proof? I want to see la incontestable proof that I have ever stolen from one of my customers. I don't. No. You stole this? You st Oh, you stole this from me. But we've never been here before. And we did we not have it when we came in? Oh, we had it when we came in and it disappeared from our inventory? It seems like old habits die hard, Mr. Armstrong. What is that? This is my Magatama. And I found it in your kitchen. No. Wow, that screen just about broke some windows. Okay, that's that's a pretty cool use of the, of the system. All right. Wee oui, wee. Oui. I have a weakness for the little trinkets and the figurines. Aw, oh, man. Do you have one at TB? My end. It just slips out. I cannot stop it. You've stolen handkerchiefs, gloves, and other things from your customers, right? Oh, we! Oui, it is la truth. I am just a timid little girl inside, Monsieur. A timid little girl. Besides, this time it was not the small trinket, we? Oui? It was five hundred thousand dollars. My is none. Why would I steal it? I have no need for such money. Really now? You can't. You, you, there is such a thing as having too much money, apparently. Oh, Monsieur, what is it? Isn't it true that you're in some pretty serious trouble? And that you are in desperate need of a large amount of cash? Yeah, it's true. You're in debt. Take that! This restaurant is deep in the red, isn't it? 
Ah, how do you know you have a loan to the tune of half a million dollars? That lorry ticket would have wiped out your debts. Gah. Well, Mr. Armstrong, what do you have to say for yourself now? Uh, uh. Okay, I guess it wasn't him then, because this is going like way too fast. Unlock successful. Maggie's motive. Mr. Armstrong, you said that the victim had a winning lottery ticket for half a million dollars. How did you know he had something like that in the first place? The man he was listening to the radio was his earpiece. Hmm, Maggie said something about that too. The winning number was announced on the news, I think. Oh, I thought they were like more like scratch cards. Uh, all of a sudden, he exploded. Yes, half a million, he shouted. And the ticket? Gone. We. Oui. He, he had all of his tickets spread out on the table. I, I was so desperately in need of money, so I put the poison in his coffee. No, 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 no. No, no, you naughty man. I simply helped myself to one of his tickets. It was the wrong one, though. What? Who has the right ticket? The victim collapsed and Maggie passed out. I thought to myself, poor Qua Pass? He had so many of them. Yeah, but only one of them was the winning ticket, right? I bet Maggie has it and she doesn't even know, and that's gonna be like her big good luck moment. How could you do that, Mr. Armstrong? Maggie was arrested because of you. No, this is not true. I did not take it. That ticket for half a million, I mean. But you just told us you did. You said you took a ticket. Mas non, ma fele. It was not. That's enough. Oh, is it Wednesday Adams, huh? Ah. Uh... Oh, it's Mr. Godot. Even worse. What, what in the heck are you doing here? I'm here for a Giavacino. Ugh. This is without a doubt. The worst coffee I have ever tasted, Mr. Armstrong. You came in here for coffee? Does this craving for coffee know no bounds? Ask either. Perhaps Mr. Armstrong stole one of the victim's tickets on the day in question. I am Le Air Ed, no? Just a pretty little girl who everyone is laughing at. But in that case, Maggie shouldn't be the only one under suspicion. He had the wrong ticket. What? Mr. Armstrong made off with the winning ticket's pretty neighbor. So, the ticket he took was worthless? Not quite. He did win something. A dollar. You see, I am just a pretty face. Without my looks, I have nothing. So, what happened to the winning ticket then? The one he meant to steal. No one knows, indeed, what did happen to it. I don't like spoiling myself by watching trailers, so... We'll just wait and see how the movie turns out tomorrow, won't we? Aw oh, man, me and Godot were like this! Thank you, Cyberpunk Geralt. No. Voila, you too! Time to laugh at the pretty little, little air ed. Looks like I won't be needing this note anymore. Really? Victor's note thrown into the trash. Damn. Looks like we've got a new mystery now, namely, where did the winning ticket go? Could you imagine if they ever did that and then later on in the game, the game was like, no, you actually do need that piece of evidence. Too bad you threw it in the trash. Next investigation, you better go get it. God damn, that would be frustrating as fuck. I've got a bad feeling about this. It would be hilarious though. Well, anyway. We can't let Maggie suffer any longer for this and certainly not again. Are we done? That's it? We're going into the trial? Nice, all right. January 7, 9.48 a.m. District Court, defendant lobby number one. Oh, I see, why are you still wearing the uniform? I guess I should have expected this. Nobody saw the other guy, huh? But he was there. But he was there when I took the coffee over, sir. Scout's honor. Maggie. Back. Detective Gumshoe. Are you doing all right? How are you feeling? As if you need to ask either question, sir. Don't let him get you down, Maggie. And don't forget to eat well, okay? Roger. And you. Yes. You better square this case away. Got it, pal. Maggie's innocent, you hear? If you, if you screw up, then I'll be doing some squaring away myself. Squaring away some paperwork for your arrest. I think he's serious. 
Hey, detective, you're on our side for once, right? Yep. Yep. So you'll be able to help Maggie out, right? Really? Can you, sir? No. Of course. I've got the situation under control. I'm going to be the first witness on the stand today. If something I say doesn't mesh with the facts, make sure you point it out, all right? Sure. Okay, we're forming a united front today, pal. You get me? All right. Like, how is the... I can't tell how tell you how grateful I am, sir. Is the judge going to acknowledge that they fucked up last time with the fake phoenix? I've, I've always admired you so much, detective. I know I can count on you. Looks like it should all go pretty smoothly today, huh? Yeah, okay. I can only wish. I feel like we have no evidence whatsoever. Jan January 7, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number 6. The gumshoe isn't even done with the green bottle. Court is now in session for the trial of Maggie Bird. Again, the defense is ready, Your Honor. Coffee's ready, Your Honor. Ah, bitter. Mr. Um, Mr. Wright. Y yes, Your Honor. You look different. Ah. What's wrong? Nothing. It's just whenever I addressed you in the previous trial, your response was, "Suck it, old man." <laughs> You was talking to me. <laughs> it was a little, well, intimidating. <laughs> no, no, that wasn't me. That was the phony phoenix. No, no, I'm sure it was you. I see, so our trusty phoenix is, right, is back with us now, is he? <laughs> our trusty... What, that's it? That's all we're getting... What, that's it? That's all that gets? So, so Mr. Godot, your opening statement, please. Mr. Trite, whether you're a fake or the real deal, we'll find out soon enough through this trial today. But I can already tell you, I'm the real Phoenix Wright. I wasn't questioning whether you are Phoenix Wright or not. I was questioning whether you had studied law or not. You lost the last trial, bruv. That's what I intend to find out. There's no denying it. Behind that mask is a man who really hates me for some reason or another. As everyone is aware, the court has already given its verdict on this case once. Therefore, I won't stand for irre irrelevant testimony during this retrial. W but we- it wasn't- it wasn't a proper trial! No, nor will I stand for a simple repetition of the evidence presented in the last trial. <laughs> it wasn't legit! This is so dumb! I'm not planning on repeating anything that phony me said, trust me. But you don't know what he said now! Now then, Mr. Godot, please summon your first witness. Let's start with the formality, shall we? Name and occupation. Um, witness, state your name for the court. Don't know who you are. Are you the real Gumshoe? Huh? Oh, sorry, sir. Are you? Am I the real judge? I don't know. You's talking to me. The name's the name's pl police department. The name's police department detective. Occupation: Dick Gumshoe. All right, I understood it. We're fine. Other way around, detective. Huh? Oh, sorry. Anyway, I'm the officer in charge of this case since yesterday, sir. Since yesterday? Yeah, the guy who was on the initial investigation is tied up with another case now. Turns out he was also an imposter detective. I hope Gumshoe really got everything under control for everyone, Sake. I see, so Detective Gumshoe. Would you outline for the court the basic facts of the case? Yes, sir. The victim's name was Glenn Elk. He was a professional programmer. He was on the payroll of Blue Screens Inc., a local company. Aw oh, man, they must make horrible computers. This is the victim's autopsy report. Updated. The court accepts this into evidence. Died of potassium cyanide poisoning. Wow, time of death was between 1.30 and 2.30 p.m. Um, and here are the floor plans of the restaurant. Surely they would know better when that was? Because there was like a body in the restaurant? Or... Maybe he didn't die right away? Okay. When the incident took place, the victim was sitting right here. The poison coffee was brought over to him by the, um, by the waitress. And the waitress being accused. Being the accused. Yeah. It's pretty damning. The victim died from poisoning almost immediately after he took a sip of the coffee, but it's still within one hour range because no one can tell time. At the time of the institute, there were two other people in the restaurant. Mr. Gene Armstrong, the owner and chef and a regular by the name of Mr. Victor Kudo. Hmm. 
It still seems to be a very straightforward case to me. Blueprints of the crime scene. X equals victim seat. Alright. Come, detective. Take up this hammer. Alright, so, knowing this series, it is actually going to be some bullshit. Like, well, the old man was sitting here. Or here. So, he couldn't see this chair. So, really, he doesn't know if it was empty. I just said I didn't see anyone. I didn't see an empty chair. And the chef just didn't leave the kitchen. Or when he did, he only looked out from there. And he only saw him here. So, look. This partition. Oh, no. And the nail of the, the and nail the defendant's coffin shut with your own two hands. Now that this has to come to you, let's have your testimony. Um, yes, sir. The incident. When the incident took place, the victim was alone at his table, sir. We understand that the guy Glenn Elg was listening to the radio at the time. Traces of poison were found in his coffee cup. And what we found was potassium cyanide. That stuff really packs a punch. And, um, it looks like Miss Bird might have had, well, some kind of a motive. Do -do -do -do. Hmm. Using the dark, aromatic depths of coffee to conceal the poison. Gotta respect it. Classy lady, yep. Yep, yep, yep. The facts of this case seem to be ironclad. Mr. Wright, I would ask you to begin your cross-examination, but this is pretty fucking slam dunk, yes. Please, no intimidation tricks this time around. Is that understood? It wasn't me. I already told you, it wasn't me. That wasn't me. The incident. Do, 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 do. You guys see Dunk Dunky's new video? Like, I, I understand this point, but... Eh. Still one of the biggest video game channels there are. Like, holy shit. There are? There is. Can I stop you for just a minute? Huh, what is it? Did I say something that contradicts the evidence? He's so desperate for that to be true, he's practically crying. Your testimony just now doesn't match the testimony given by Miss Bird. She claims that there, are, there was another man at the victim's table. Yeah, that's what she said. Can't that's what she said, you don't think. What, what killer wouldn't say that when faced with a homicide conviction? Exactly, everyone who defends himself is guilty. Hey. Sadly, her testimony isn't supported by the owner or the other customer. Isn't that right, Detective Gumshoe? Yeah, it's true. There are two testimonies tie up on that. They both said there was no other guy at the table. Hmm. He's doing a lot of hmm. -ing. What should I do? Should I press on this point a little? Yeah, always press. Always. Well, maybe the other witnesses just missed him. Maybe their view of the victim's table is obscured in some way. Yeah! Ha. <sighs> That argument is as weak as the coffee at Trebian, right? I have here in my possession a ticket. A ticket? Looks more like a photo to me. Yeah, a one-way ticket to Guiltyville. Oh god, and population to defend. Oh man! Damn. We can't we can't fucking defend ourselves against that swagger. This is a photograph taken from near the entrance to the kitchen. This is the scene as witnessed by the chef moments after the poisoning took place, correct? I think the court will agree that such a clear view of the scene of the crime. How, Mr. Trite, could anyone have overlooked the second person at the table? Maybe the chair was just a little to the left. Alright, I guess I was wrong? Huh. It certainly seems to show the victim's table in it extremely clearly. Crime photo adds to the court record. Do. Do do. Do do. I mean, this chair is way more to the into the thing. This doesn't even look right. We understand that the guy Glenn Elg was listening to the radio at the time. He's listening to his radio, you say? To shreds, you say? Yeah, he had a portable radio in his chest pocket. Maggie told us that too, didn't she? Something about how one of them had some sort of earpiece. What should I do? Should I press on this point a little harder or not? Yeah. And what was it that the victim was listening to on the radio, Detective Gumshoe? Huh? How should I know? Thanks a lot. We're now one step closer to the middle of nowhere. 
population defendant. This isn't going very well, is it? Hmm. Detective, could you perhaps tell us about the poison and how it was used? So traces of the poison were found in the coffee coffee cup and nowhere else? Not sure I get you, pal. Was the poison a liquid? Or what, was it a powder? I don't fucking know. If I had to put it in layman's terms, I'd say it was a powdery substance. So the poison could have been in anything that was on the table. Sugar, salt, pepper. Objection. Ha. Ha. Do you put salt and pepper in your coffee tray? I could. Sometimes I eat the tea bag. The victim took his coffee ba black with no sugar. Ugh. It seems that the poison could have only been in the coffee. What should I do? Should I press on this point a little harder? Yeah, of course, yeah. Are you absolutely certain that the victim even drank any of his coffee? Huh? What do you mean? According to this file, the poison was found in the victim's coffee cup. But what proof is there that the victim ever drank any of it? Oh, hey, you're right. That's what I think. <laughs> In case you were wondering, that last objection was for de for the detective there. Huh? For me? Oh hey, you're right. You may be fooling the court, but I'm not falling for it. If you have the time to waste, you have the time to present that piece of evidence. Th that piece, sir? Yes, that piece. Um, <laughs> what piece was it again? You know. This. Why is he allowed to keep doing that? Should I be grateful for this coffee? I should be great. Should I be grateful? This coffee's only hot enough to give me first degree burns. Did he do that to fake Phoenix? Oh no, it was pain, wasn't it? Oh, now I remember. Um, this is the uh, the victim's coffee cup. Yes, the victim's cup. Take a good look at the rim. Oh yes, it's unmistakable. There is clearly a coffee stain on it. Conclusive proof that the victim did drink the poisoned coffee that was in this cup. Is it though? The victim gulped down the bitter death that w that the waitress brought to him, like this. Just proof that the that the cup was drank drunk from. For the record, the only prints on the cup were the victims and the defendants. The coffee c contained potassium cyanide covering the victim and Maggie's finger fingerprints. What about their their lip print? From further investigation of this cup, we found a certain chemical substance. And what we found was potassium cyanide. That stuff really packs a punch. Oh. Potassium cyanide? I've heard of that chemical before. Exactly how strong is this poison, Detective Gumshoe? It's, well, that stuff's lethal. Eat too much in your history. Eat too much of anything in your history. That's what too much means. How much is too much? Lethal dose is 0 0.2 grams. That's about enough to finish anyone off. 0 0.2 grams? How much is that? You know when you swab your ears for earwax? Yeah, about that much. Earwax, huh? Sounds like something Gumshoe's got an abundance of. Hmm, such a small quantity of poison could have been concealed anywhere. Exactly. And, um, it looks like Miss Bird might have had, well, some kind of motive. Some kind of a motive. Yeah, but if you ask me, it's been blown way out of proportion. Objection! Yep. You know what my golden rule is, detective? Chuck out a bad cup of coffee. You can always get another. Huh? I don't get it. Okay, is it is it just coffee jokes all the way down? Like, is this... It is, he's just coffee. He's at coffee, that's it? This is... This is his thing. He's cyborg coffee man. I, I'm saying we can always get another witness on the stand if we have to chuck you out. Gulp. So stick to the facts, detective. Now then, what was Miss Miss Bird's motive? Come on, Gumshoe. She was. They said she wanted to steal a lottery ticket. First, you first you pick your outfit out of the hat. All right, I'm Cyborg Witcher. All right, and now you pick your interest out of the hat. Von Karma got whipping. All right. Uh, Von Karma's dad got being a fucking vampire. All right, what are you gonna get? You got coffee. All right, cool. So I'm a cyborg that loves coffee. Yep, that's what that's what you do. I knew it. That's what we heard yesterday too. It disappeared from the scene of the crime. It wasn't just any lottery ticket. 
It was a winning ticket for half a million. Mr. Armstrong knew about the ticket too, didn't he? But he stole the wrong one. Then, is it possible Maggie stole the winning one? What should I do? Should I press on this point? Yeah. Wait a minute. The mere fact that, lo that the lottery ticket disappeared in no way implicates my client. Huh. I have here in my hand the very ticket in question. Oh, that, that, that's the half a million, half a million dollars lottery ticket. Didn't say that very well. One of the female police officers found it when she was conducting a search on Maggie Bird of the defendant. What, what? Order, order. Ah, she's quite a lucky bird, our little waitress. No, she's not, objection. Ah, she's not lucky at all, look. Oh, she's not lucky at all. You will submit that ticket as evidence to the court immediately. I want her here on, on my desk. I better keep an eye on that ticket. The way the judge's voice is quivering. Victim's lottery ticket adds to the court record. So did Imposter Phoenix come in and do all this to try and get the ticket from her? Is that all, all, all it is? Hmm. This ticket was presented to the court in the previous trial too. But it feels heavier now somehow. Half a million dollars, you say? What, you got? You didn't know it was a winning ticket last time? It's just a scrap of paper. What matters is where it was found, your honor. You can buy a lot, a lot of cup of coffees for that. Cup of coffees, and that's on Maggie's person, unfortunately. That's enough. The facts of this case seem overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly clear to me, as they always do at this stage of the trial, but then Phoenix waves his hand and does mumbo bumbo bumbo jumbo bullshit. Not this time. Guilty. Get the fuck out of here. The defendant had ample opportunity to commit the crime of which she is charged. Furthermore, it seems beyond reasonable doubt that she did indeed commit this crime. I like an old man who knows the score. There's also the matter of the half a million dollar lottery ticket. It's gone. That alone provides a very credible motive. I mean, for that sum of money, even I might be tempted to bend the rules. I don't mind an old man who is, I don't mind an old man who is weak to the siren call of money. Not good, Nick. The evidence against Maggie is starting to pile up fast. Yeah, that's because the court has ruled guilty once already. I'd say it's about time to wrap up this re this repeat performance. With one final, decisive piece of evidence. He's got more evidence against Maggie? Alright, this is how we got all the evidence in here, is fucking in, in, in the trial. This, this is the apron the delightful Miss Bird was wearing at the time. Wow, that's not the cleanest apron I've seen. That, that stain looks like... It can't be blood, can it? Ha, it seems the star of our play was a little flustered. There's blood on the apron, but not on the table? And somehow spilled coffee on herself. The coffee? That's not exactly the first thing that caught my eye. Of course, the coffee stain isn't the most interesting thing about this apron. No, there's something even... There's something else that stands out even more. The thread count. It's unbelievable. You wouldn't believe the thread. I, I would sleep on this. Hmm, something else? I, I presume you mean... Of course, I'm referring to the pocket. Yes, I was about to say that. The pocket. A search carried right out... A search carried out right after the incident uncovered this. Potassium cyanide. The very poison used by the killer was in her apron pocket. A bottle of poison in Maggie's pocket. Yeah, and Maggie's prints were the only ones on it. What? Oh, she didn't tell us that. Uh, you know what? I'm starting to think that maybe she is guilty. Order, order, order. The court will accept these items in evidence. Are we really not talking about the blood? Apron added to the court. Is it jam? Worn by Maggie at the time has, uh, has a small pocket, but, but big stains. There's something still bothering you, Mr. Godot. Why have you not explained the blood stain to the court? Oh, you can see it. Okay. What blood stain? Irrelevant. Blood stain? What blood stain would that be? Don't play games, prosecutor! The blood colored stain that's smeared all over the apron. That's ridiculous. No one told me anything about a blood stain. You. You don't need to be told. Just look at it. Well. Well. Are, are you red colorblind? Well, detective, could the stain really be blood? No way, sir. That's... it's just ketchup, sir. Ketchups? She must have gotten someone on her apron while, t while taking someone their breakfast that day. You could have spoken up a little sooner, Detective Gumshoe. 
Full stunt like that again, and I'll have you drink 17 cups of ketchup, witness. Oh, I thought everyone knew what it was already. Hmm, I haven't seen anything yet to make me doubt this, the last ruling I made on this case. The motive, the opportunity, and the supporting evidence. They have all been clearly established. Well, Trite, it seems you really are a phony after all. Uh, you really know how to drive a man nuts. Can you see my tie? Witness, please continue with your testimony. Describe for the court the crime scene and the findings of your investigation there. Do, 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 do. Thank you, Stabby Magoo, for the eight-month resub. Thank you, Misky, Misky Whiskey, for the new sub. Welcome, Misky Whiskey. And thank you, Romano Zersky. Hopefully that's right. Or Roman Ozersky? Probably Romano Zersky. Thank you for the new sub. Welcome. The investigation. The crime is reported at 2.25 p.m. by a kind of scary old man, sir. Doo -doo, doo. Poor Maggie had passed out from the shock. It must have been real tough for her. The victim didn't have any identification on him, but we figured out who he was pretty quick, and then the investigation went smoothly. When Maggie was searched, we found the lottery ticket and the bottle of poison, and that was it. There was nothing else missing from the crime scene. What about the CD and the... Uh, hmm, you identified the victim and secured your prime suspect. Very good. Last chance to convince the court you're a real lawyer, Trite. Don't count on any more cross-examinations after this one. So let the fun begin. Do 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 do. Scary old man, Detective Gumshoe. There's an old man who's a regular at the restaurant where the incident happens. Uh, we're obviously talking about the same old man. Clarify just to make sure officers were dispatched right after the report came in, but the old guy still made a fuss. What took you so long? Then he hurled abuse at them and seeds. Yeah, same guy. Hmm, seeds. Ah, it was nothing. I caught each one with my teeth. You were there? I guess not even the mighty Godot can avoid being attacked by that guy. Or did you go talk to him? All right. The old man was the only other customer in, in the place at the time. He took his time finding a payphone, apparently, so he was late reporting the crime. Trade Band doesn't have a phone? Did they just say that and I glossed over it? How long was the defendant unconscious for? The officers got to the crime scene at around 2.40. Maggie was still out cold in the kitchen at that time. It took another 10 in the kitchen, took another 10 minutes or so before she came in. I would have liked to have been on the scene myself. I bet you would have liked to have carried out the search, too. I would have loved to see Maggie asleep like that. All pretty and peaceful. Whoa, you're a professional detective, Gumshoe, not a professional bird watcher. I respect the man who can watch the birds. Save the romantics for your own time, detective. All we need to know about this is the investigation. Oops, I guess I'm pretty red right now, aren't I? The victim didn't have any identification on him. He didn't have any? Are you saying that it was stolen then? No, I don't think so. The victim didn't have a driver's license or even a credit card on him, pal. All he had was 58 cents in his wallet. 58 cents? Yeah, I can't believe I found someone with less in their wallet than me, pal. The victim sounds like he was a thoroughly miserable young man. What the fuck? Or some kind of outlaw. Why not give him a bit of an edge? I think I'm onto something here. We figured out who was pretty quick and then the investigation How did you find that out? Wait a sec. Huh? Did I say something dumb again? Let me paraphrase what you just testified to this court. The victim didn't have any form of ID on him. That's basically what you said, yes? Yeah, basically. In that case, how were you able to identify the victim so quickly? Oh, that. He's so let down, he's got the whole sh sagging shoulders and puppy eyes thing going. There was a prescription bag on the victim's table along with a lottery ticket. It seems Mr. Glenn... Glenelg visited his doctor before he went to Treben. We got the victim's name from the medical records of the doc who prescribed the meds. Hmm, that's a reliable enough source for the court. What should I do? Should I leave this alone or ask to hear more? What? What sort of med what sort of medicine was in the bag? Potassium cyanide, pal. Well, actually, the bag we found was empty. How do you know it was his then, huh? Yeah, completely empty. It was completely empty. 
victim's prescription bag added to the court record. <laughs> You're entering an empty paper bag's evidence? Desperate, are you, Trite? Alright. I have a feeling there's going to be some bullshit involved in that bag later. Now, what happened with the investigation after that, detective? Do 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 do. Oh, I can't ask about the other one. All right. But the defendant had been passed out for a while, correct? In that case, isn't it possible someone planted the evidence in Maggie's pocket? Hey, yeah, you nailed it, pal. Hmm. It happens to me all the time. We had a department party the other day, and when I got home, I was wearing the boss's shoes. Objection. Keep up this crazy testimony, detective, and those shoes will end up down your throat. That's your objection? Sorry. So trite. Someone planted the evidence in Maggie's pocket? That's a pretty bold statement. Care to back it up with some evidence? Um, well, I'd love to if I had any. I mean, you're just raising the possibility. It appears you have no evidence to support your theory, Mr. Wright. How can, how can there be evidence of that? Continue with your testimony, witness. Game's dumb. But it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be frustrating. So the half a million, so the half a million dollar lottery ticket and the bottle of poison were accounted for. Do do. Yeah, interesting. It's true that those two items are accounted for, but wasn't there another lottery ticket that was stolen that day? Oh yeah, the one that the one the restaurant owner took. You want a whole dollar with it? What a lucky guy, huh? And they're just going to let him get away with it? <laughs> it was just one dollar, detective. I guess no one cares when it's that little, except for Gumshoe. If I don't find a hole in this testimony, the judge is going to hand down his verdict. Gumshoe isn't giving us anything to work with, and we can't find any contradictions if he doesn't give us something. Yeah, that's true. But Maggie and Gumshoe are, like, dumb and dumber. Our only hope is that they were so dumb they missed something obvious. Come on, Gumshoe, be the dumbest you've ever been. Okay, so do I... Um... Do I press again, or do I present evidence? I kind of want to press everything in just in case. All right, so we got this, right? Like, if the bag is if the bag is empty, why was he carrying an empty bag? Something obviously something else was stolen, or am I supposed to press again? I guess it has to be that, right? Like, why would he have an- Why would he be carrying around an empty fucking prescription bag? Says the gumshoe, I think I should point something out to you. There is just one small contradiction in your testimony. Oh, finally. I'm getting all anxious just waiting, so hurry up, will you? You testified that nothing else was missing from the crime scene. However, the prescription bag you mentioned was empty. Did the officers recover the medicine from the scene of the crime later? Um, no, they didn't. The victim was given a prescription right before the going to Trebian. Where then did the medicine disappear to? You are too cool, pal. Indeed. Due consideration wasn't given to the victim's prescription in the previous trial. Witness, why do you always overlook such vital pieces of evidence? Even though I did and Godot did as well. I, er, I guess that's the most careless thing I've done so far, huh? Not even close. The victim was killed by poison, and the victim's medicine mysteriously disappeared. The victim's own prescription could have been the lethal poison itself. <laughs> yeah, okay. Wait, we're going for that? <laughs> order, order. Well, Mr. Kado, what do you have to say? <laughs> Prescription for poison. What? Uh, that's all. <laughs> what? Having trouble sleeping? Okay, take 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 one tenth of a gram of potassium cyanide. No more. No more. Actually, I'm not a doctor. Maybe there is some there is some medicinal use for trace amounts of potassium cyanide or some shit. I don't fucking know. Read read for. Read for the court the name. Sorry, read for the court the name of the clinic on the prescription bag, if you will. What's the clinic's name got to do with anything? New Ear Auto Laryngological Clinic. Auto Laryngological Clinic. Just what kind of illness was the victim suffering from, Mr. Godot? 
ear or something. Hardly an illness, Your Honor. More like a bitter war wound, you could say. A war wound? The day before the Institute, Mr. Elk found himself in a fight. He took a blow to the side of the head and ruptured his eardrum. He ruptured his eardrum? Then what on earth was the prescription he was given? It was a cream that was to be applied topically inside his ear canal, not to be ingested. Okay, well where's that? What? It's mentioned in the autopsy report if you read the fine print. Is it? I can't read the autopsy report, Godot. I wish I could read. You. <laughs> well, where is that? It's such a deal to read the front print. Which ear was it? Because he had an earpiece in. They found traces of the medication in the victim's left ear. Yes, here it is, in very, very fine print. It seems Mr. L correctly applied some of his medication while he was at Trey Ben. Therefore, it would be absurd to believe that he would eat. He would have eaten his medication. Erg. It seems that this, this medication is irrelevant to the case after all. Yeah, but it's still gone. No. And it's unaccounted for. That means that there's proof that someone else is there, Nick. If you don't think of something quick, it'll all be over. She's right, but I can't get away with any old weak objection. What should I do? Push the medication issue. It's, yeah, push. Let's say, save and push. Save and push. It's still gone. That means someone else was there. Only moments ago, Mr. Godot made the following statement. It seems Mr. L correctly applied some of his medication while he was at Trey Ben. If that's the case, then why was the medication not found at the scene of the crime? Yeah, tell him, right? Tell him. Oh, shit. But the medication in question was for topical use inside the ear canal. That doesn't change the fact that it could not be found at the crime scene. However insignificant it may seem, it's a lawyer's duty to pursue the truth. You know as well as I do that the medication is irrelevant. It hardly seems likely that a prescription drug would contain potassium cyanide. It hardly seems likely that, this, that the coffee the waitress served would contain it either. But it did. The possibility is undeniable. Ah, he's got me there. Hmm, that's enough. Mr. Godot, is the detective the only witness the prosecution wishes to call? Oh, we're just leaving this. Okay, cool. Mr. Godot. Um, I, uh... I've got my own witness I like to call, sir. <laughs> it's the old man who was there in the restaurant on the day of the murder. Victor Kudo, the pigeon hater? Mm, very well. The matter of the disappearing medication seems a little more than trivial at best. However, it wasn't explored at all in the previous trial. And that is something that bothers me. Yay, vacations. Good job, Nick. Do, 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 do. The court will adjourn for a 10 minute recess, after which we will hear the prosecution's next, next witness. Pat. I suppose this means I'll just have to finish you off in my last six cups. Well, he's had 11 cups already? Cores are adjourned for recess. January 7, 11.03 a.m., District Court Lobby. Uh, thank you, Pal Talman, for the new sub. Welcome, Pal Talman. Hopefully I'm saying your name right. And thank you, Smear, for the 16-month resub. Thank you, Smear. Phew, that was close. Tell me about it. I nearly died in there. That's my line, sir. No, it's my line. I think I really did die a little bit. Bird, how did your fingerprints get on the on the vial? Looks like we all nearly died in there. I can't believe Detective Gumshoe. How could he betray us like that? Huh? He said he'd help me, but he totally set me up. I don't think he meant to do that, Maggie. He was backed into a corner. I mean, the guy's got to do his job, right? It's okay, I know all about lies and betrayal. I've had them my whole life. Whoa, what are you being mean to Gumshoe for? But it really hurt this time. It felt like someone punched me hard in the stomach. I hate that guy. I don't ever want to see him again. What the fuck? Poor Gumshoe. So the next witness is going to be that old guy from the park, right? Yeah, Mr. Kudo, lover of waitress outfits and projectile seeds. I hope he brings some to the court. I bet he's going to be real stubborn. I mean, he's pretty set in his ways, you know? Yeah, he's a big old grouch. Are you going to be able to handle him, Nick? Yeah, I can take whatever he throws at me, even those never-ending bird seeds. January 7, 11.15 a.m., District Court, courtroom number four. Court will now reconvene for the trial of Maggie Bird. Mr. Godot, your next witness, please. 
The prosecution calls the lucky old timer who caught the show over a cup of coffee. Will the witness please take the stand? No. He brought the seeds. Wonderful. Name and occupation, if you don't mind. The name is Victor Kudo, born and bred in the land of the rising sun. Honor and duty are what make me. Mind you, I can be quite emotional at times, too. We don't need to hear about that, Mr. Kudo. Just tell the court your occupation. My occupation? Kai, listen, young'un. How much call... How much call do you think there is for kimono embroidery here? Oh, okay. Kimono embroidery? That's what I do, or did, or did, back in Japan. I embroidered family crests on kimonos. My ancestors were embroidering kimonos before this country even existed. Wow, a real craftsman. They're a dying breed. Hey, maybe he could embroider my costume sometime. No, anyway, like I said, there's not much demand for that kind of thing here. So I have to take a job working the cash, cash register at a burger joint, pretending to smile. That burger joint would have been better off putting him in the kitchen. Now then, witness, were you in the restaurant at the time of the incident? Oh yes, I was eating some seeds over a cup of javachino. Seeds? That's that's what you're asking, not javachino? What do you think these are, hmm? I see. So you saw everything that happened, Gramps. Did I? Oh yes. Oh yes, I did. I saw it all. Then please tell the court. We're all ears. Except for the victim. He had a ear problem. So, sure, sure, I'll tell you. I'll tell you every last detail. He's really getting into this. Do, 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 do. What I witnessed. The young man was reading the sports paper. Do, 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 do. The serving girl brought him a javachino, but she put something in it. The man took one sip of it, looked like he was in terrible pain, and then collapsed. That's the serving girl right there in the defendant's chair. I remember her well. That's it? Okay. Hmm, slam dunk, Mr. Kudo. She is not a serving girl. Please refer to her as a waitress. Ka, you're as bad as the rest of them. All these newfangled words. What's wrong with the old-fashioned ones, hmm? Newfangled? All this talk of radios and glasses, it's wireless and spectacles, I tell you. Uh, excuse me. Listen to me, everyone. Don't forget the old values. Don't let the good old days slip away. Too late. Fucking boomer. Well, um, I think it's time to begin the cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Oh, a little sleepy. Sorry, the young man was reading the new sports paper. So you saw the victim, then. You saw Mr. Glenn Elg. This is a weird name, man. I wanted to know if Gutson Braun retained his championship or not. So he was looking at the sports paper the victim was reading, huh? And at the location in question, where were you sitting? There are partitions between tables on the same side of the restaurant, right? So what if there are? If you say that you could see the victim, that means you were sitting at a table on the other side of the restaurant, correct? Ka. I go to that place to drink Javachino. I don't go to sit. I don't remember which table I was sitting at. What do you mean you don't remember? You mean you go there to eye the waitress? Serving girl brought him a javachino, but she put something in it. Mr. Kudo, that is a very grave accusation. Are you sure about what you saw? Dr. Kudo never makes mistakes. I dot every T and cross every I. I see. My eyesight's fine. The doctor said I only need spectacles for reading and driving. I bet his eyes are only really fine when he's scoping out a waitress. And I saw that. I saw what the serving girl put into the javachino as well. I bet I know what's coming coming up and something tells me I'm not going to like it. Eh, I'll always press. Your Honor, we need more clarification on what was put into the victim's coffee. I'd like to ask that the witness add what he knows about this to his testimony. Hmm, I agree. Witness, will you enlighten us, please? Sure, sure. Do, do. There's no question about it. She very conspicuously put some white powder in there. Did she really put that into the coffee? You doubt me, boy? She took some... Uh, she took some out of a small brown bottle and sprinkled it in. Why would she do that while while carrying the coffee over? That's so stupid. All right, time to go poisoning. All right. Oh shit! I forgot to put the poison in while I was in private in the kitchen. Better whip it out right here in the middle of the restaurant while everyone can see and go bum ba bum ba ba bum ba ba bum. Like, couldn't she have been adding sugar? Sugar in a small brown bottle like that? Like that? 
Witness, could you please describe the bottle in more concrete terms? Uh, a bottle like this, perhaps? Leading the witness! Objection! Leading the witness! Leading the witness! Oh, there it is! That's the one! That's the bottle of potassium cyanide, I presume. So what did the accused put into the coffee? I think it's clear, don't you? Did we test it? The man took one sip of it, looked like he was in terrible pain, and then collapsed. Doo -doo. He took just one sip. One second. Alright, sorry about that. You youngins, you waste everything. Those javachinos cost eight dollars. In the good old days, we would have drank every last drop, eaten the cup, and then died. Cup eaters, congratulations. You have earned the title of baddiest man to grace a, cur a courtroom. Nope, not even close. Oh, yeah, baby's crying. Sorry, you might be hearing that. So it was an immediate death? Well, with potassium cyanide, I suppose that is possible. Oh, yes, he slumped over without so much as a twitch. TV. I felt the Javachino I just drank turn sour in, in, in my stomach. Oh yes, I know that feeling. And the waitress? I presume she is. That's the servant girl right there in the defendant's chair. I remember her well. You said, I remember her well in reference to the waitress. But you only saw the uniform. Does she have any particular features that you can identify her by? Particular features? It's a disgrace. That's what it is. Sorry. You could see all the way up to her, her, you know, she's practically naked in that uniform. Oh my god, if it was someone else wearing the... <laughs> he, he just came out wearing the outfit. <laughs> he never saw anything else, he just saw the... <laughs> do, 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 do. Here we go. <laughs> So a particular feature you recognize about the waitress is her outfit, but anyone could wear such, just such a uniform, even me. Well, Mr. Wright, please spare the court any further mental anguish from that image. Don't get all excited, Nick. You've got to keep yourself together. I, I guess I got a bit carried away. Yeah, there are other things I recognize about her, too. He seems pretty sure of himself. What should I do? Press. Sure, you saw a waitress take the coffee over to the victim. But what matters is whether the waitress was Maggie Bird or not. I'm quite right. Mr. Kudo. Those other features that you recognize about the defendant. I would ask you to add them to your testimony. Sure, sure. There was a ribbon in her hair and her apron straps were loose. What? You do seem to remember several details about her appearance. But what about the most crucial detail of all? Her face. Okay, as if I wouldn't remember that. Okay, can you describe her? The witness noticed the straps of the accused apron. He's unlikely to make a mistake about her face. That's right, I can even tell you the color of the ribbon in, in, in her hair. It was red. So you see, there's nothing wrong with the witness's eyesight. Hmm. There's no doubt he remembers the waitress, the waitress pretty well. What should I do? I get the feeling there's something more to this somehow. Yeah, I mean... It's a bit orangey too, but yeah. How can Godot see it? Ask about the straps, ask about the waitress's back. Ask about the straps. Mr. Kudo, you seem especially interested in straps. Why is that? What? The ribbon in her hair, the straps on her apron. What's the fa what's the fascination? Fascination? Objection. People have all kinds of fetishes, Trite. We don't need to embarrass the witness. <laughs> just, just like, no, we're just going for it. Listen, you young upstarts, I haven't got some sick strap fetish. I mean, I do. Hmm, is there any relevance to the witness's unusual love of straps, Mr. Wright? I was just curious as to why he was so fixated on the waitress's straps. I said I haven't got a strap fetish. How many times do I have to repeat myself? Very well. Continue with your testimony, Mr. Kudo, and make it strapless. Grumble, grumble. Do you think old CD really saw Maggie do it? Well, he probably had his eye on the waitress the whole time. That's why he was there. But he was there for the cute outfits, right? Not the waitress. I guess. She makes a good point, though. Hey, did I just say something clever? I wonder if the waitress Mr. Kudo saw really was Maggie. That's what we have to figure out, Nick. 
Alright, so we go to the last one and press it again. And this time we go to the other part, the back. Objection. The identity fame features you described are all things you would see from the back. Oh, it's the Wednesday Adams girl! So what? Is it possible that you never saw the waitress from the front at all? Objection. Uh, he's got you there, Gramps. <laughs> Objection! I agree! <laughs> Agreement! People normally talk about facial features when they're asked to describe someone. <laughs> this witness testimony is nothing but straps and ribbons. <laughs> this is harassment, I tell you. I'm not obsessed with straps or ribbons. I'm just telling you what I saw. Mr. Gudo, the court requests that you add details about any identifying features. Features you observe from the front, that is, to your testimony. Sure, sure. This old man's testimony is getting longer and longer. And if I can't find a hole in it soon, it'll get even longer, I bet. Surely, with the defendant right in front of him, wearing the exact same outfit, he could just bullshit his way now. This is kind of dumb. There wasn't anything like that common interest about her when I saw her from the front. You didn't find anything to be distinct, but you did clearly see the waitress's witness's face, yes? No question about it. I didn't come this far to back down now. Victor Kudo never backs down. But you would have noticed her strap that she has on the front. Does she have any straps on the front? That's not the answer I was looking for, but okay. This has turned into a matter of pride for old CD now, I guess. I wonder if you really did see Maggie's face or not. Like I thought, we need some concrete proof of this. Proof that the guy didn't see the waitress clearly from the front. If you'd seen her from the front, you would have thrown seeds at her because she's a bird. Do you think old CD really saw Maggie do it? Well, he probably had his eye on the waitress the whole time as he was there. Okay, cute outfit. Okay. Okay, so. Either there's some sort of strap, or he would have noticed the blood on her apron, even though it was ketchup. Like, that's kind of a stretch. So it's it's either that, or, or this? Let's go with this. Mr. Kudo, I would like to, you to please take a look at this. God, that filthy thing would suit filth like you just perfectly. Actually, it reminds me of what my grandson looks like just after he's done eating. Have you ever seen this before? Of course I haven't. Do you think I'd forget something as dirty as that, hmm? Well, you half-witted clot. You foolish fool. Checkmate. He's so proud. Look at his smug little turtle face. Oh my god, he's so proud. Damn. What? What is it? Ever since I said you half-witted clot, there's been an eerie silence in here. Mr. Kudo, this apron is the apron worn by the defendant on the day of the poisoning. Uh, and just as you said yourself, you wouldn't forget something like this. Which means if you had really seen this apron before, er, yes, you know what I'm getting at. You couldn't have possibly seen the waitress from the front. Oops. Witness, you can't just oops your way out of this. Contempt of court. Ah, huh? well, well. Looks like we finally have a genuine trial on our hands. Time for celebratory cup of joe. Listen, Trite, here are the facts. On the day of the incident, there was only one waitress in the restaurant. That being the defendant, Miss Maggie Bird. Exactly. And when that one waitress put the poison into the cup into the coffee cup, this old guy was watching. Hmm. I hope you understand the gravity of the situation, Mr. Kudo. The fate of the defendant may rest on what you say, on what you say you remember seeing. Just tell the court exactly what you saw, Gramps. You can rely on me, Captain. My noggin's in perfect working order. I can't remember a single occasion when I forgot what burger a customer wanted. You can't remember? Probably more like he messed up so many times he's blocking it out. I kinda wanna eat a burger now. Bunger, bunger, bunger. Very well, let's test how good your memory and attention to detail is, Mr. Kudo. Tell us what you remember about the victim. About the victim. Uh, thank you for the resub, Cashel. Thank you very much. Six months. Thank you, Cashel. He was another of those pesky young types wearing a broken pair of spectacles. He? 
He had a newspaper. Oh, right, the victim, sorry. He had a newspaper in his right hand, and the noisy brat kept rustling its pages. The young man was listening to the wireless, I remember that well. Then the serving girl in the question brought over the Javicino. The little fidget picked up the cup with his free hand and took a sip. The testimony we have just heard was to test how credible the witness's memory is. It seems to me that he remembers the victim in, the, in a great deal of detail. Oh yes, I hate those, you know, what types who are so vague about everything. All right, but considering that we don't know anything else about the uh, about the witness, uh, the victim at this time, we have nothing to go on. This could be complete bullshit. How are we going to handle this, Nick? We only need to do one thing. Don't know why. We just need to prove that the old man's memory is shot. Just trip him up, you mean? Isn't that kind of cruel? I suppose, but it's what I do best. Who's an the Spectacles. Dark glasses to you. One of the lenses was green, but the other was broken. Newfangled rubbish. That's why I remember him so well. He did have some kind of lens over his left eye. But I wouldn't have called it a pair of glasses. Yeah, what is that? Hmm, he seems to have been wearing some rather modern looking shades. Is it something that makes him be able to to see something in the paper he was looking at. Like that that's kind of kind of blue up there, right? Is it something that makes like lines appear that are in invisible ink or some shit? Like what the fuck is that? He's wearing some rather long shit. Perhaps I should take the wearing wearing some and rival Mr. Godot's sharp appearance. Uh, we better come up with something sharp and quick. Guess I'll wait and see if I should challenge him about the spectacles. He had a newspaper in his right hand, and the noisy brat kept rustling its pages. Doo -doo. The newspaper was a sports paper, was it? That young hooligan I nearly asked him, can't you even read without fidgeting, hmm? How was I supposed to be able to read the back page with all that rustling going on? I needed to find out if Gustin Braun retained his championship title. It was his paper, not yours. If you wanted to know so bad, why didn't you buy your own? What are you looking at me like that for, hmm? Something like that. What he said. Ow, oh, Gustin Braun got beaten yesterday, by the way. Anyway. The young man was listening to the wireless. I remember that well. Which ear was it in? The wireless. The, de the decadent young rascal. In my day, it was one or the other. Read the paper or listen to the wireless. Oh boy. And using an earpiece. It's selfish. That's what it is. I was straining my ears, but I couldn't catch any of it. Was he that desperate to listen to the radio? What are looking at me like that for? Ow, ow. Sorry, that automatically played there. Then the serving girl in question brought over the Javachino. It's called Cappuccino. You mean the waitress who you only saw from behind, right? You're one of those, are you? You never let anything go, isn't that right? I'm a defense attorney! Maybe. What does it matter if I saw her from the front or from behind? My eyes don't lie. Ow, ow. I better not push it until I've got some hard evidence. Fucking old bag energy over here. Wendy old bag. The little fidget picked up the, the cup with his free hand and took a sip. His free hand? Yes. Which hand was that? Weren't you listening before, cloth ears? I said he was rustling the newspaper with his right hand, didn't I? I think he did, right? His, if his free hand wasn't his right hand... Shit. Ow, ow. Ha. Perhaps the great Mr. Trey has three hands. Zip. Yeesh. I was only asking. No need to gang up on me and treat me like a freak. The whole point of this cross-examination is to establish, establish just one thing. That this old guy's memory has more holes than a slice of Swiss. Got him. I guess we just need to find, find a contradiction. There's some testimony somewhere, huh? Anything will do. Even the smallest detail. We just need one mistake and he's ours. Okay. He was another one of those young types wearing a broken pair of spectacles. Okay. So it wasn't really a broken pair of spectacles. It was just this. The victim was a programmer. He's left your drum rush the day before the incident. Okay. What... What, um... What ear was his earpiece in? I'd like to know. He had a newspaper in his right hand and the noisy brat kept rustling his, page his pages. The young man was listening to the wireless. I remember that well. Then the serving girl in question brought over the Javachino. The little fidget picked up his cup with his free hand and took a sip. Okay, well, it's not Javachino. It was just coffee, but I don't think that matters, right? Okay, that's possibly it. The little fidget with his free hand took a sip. 
Okay, so I think I don't think that's it. I think that's fine. Like that, that's a fair representation of what that is. That's fine. He had a newspaper in his right hand, and the noisy brat kept rustling his pages. All right. So is there any way we can we can dispute that? Left by victim. All left, like his left hand. Doodle is in the victim's handwriting. Is it that he couldn't have drank it because he was doodling at the time? Like. He didn't have a free hand because he was doodling, but, like, that's kind of dumb. Like, he could have doodled earlier and wasn't doodling when he was looking, right? Okay, that's a, a possibility. What about, what about the, the, the ticket? The young man was listening to the wireless. I remember that well. Wait, what was the doodle? Does the doodle have anything to do with the money he just lost? He just won hundred thousand. No, it's five hundred thousand. There's five hundred thousand over there. So that means he was he was doodling while he was uh. Okay, so free hand. All right, let's let's try that. Nope, not it. Your honor, that statement contradicts his evidence. It does? I don't see anything contradictory. Really? Okay. Maybe it's the other one? No, that's not it. Okay. I didn't think so. What was the other possibility we had? It was uh that it wasn't Java that it wasn't Javachino, it's a it's coffee. Yes. Yeah, it's not that either. Okay, so it's something else. Okay, there's another person who was in the broken the noise of the the young man was listening to the wireless, I remember that well. And then the certain girl in question brought over to the Javachino. Little fidget. Okay, what? Like, wh I want more information about the wireless. Okay, so his, his ear being ruptured makes me question the wireless thing because. But that hasn't been brought up for a while. Okay, let's do that one. Maybe it's not that. Maybe it's his, uh... It's the medicine? Okay, so I was gonna see here if the, what kind of fingerprints were on the uh, the the fingerprints were on the uh, from the victim were here, but now it's like if he had picked this cup up, he would have to pick it up with his right hand, right? Because because the, the lip marks are here. But I mean, like I pick up my cup all the time without picking up by the handle, but it's this game, so it wants to turn to particular, right? Is that it? Mr. Kudo, you remember what you were told at the start of this testimony? That this was a way of testing your credibility of your memory. I know, I know, there's nothing wrong with my memory, I tell you nothing. If, it, if I got anything wrong, I'll eat these seeds and sing the pigeon song. Okay, to tell us where this is going, Trite? According to Mr. Kudo, the victim was holding the paper in his right hand. 
while drinking coffee with his free hand, which would make that his left. Ga, what is this? Kindergarten? But I would like the court to please take a look at this. That's the cup the victim used. Correct. Yes, and on the rim, you'll notice the mark left by the victim's lips. Yes, there is a stain left by the coffee. If you consider where that stain is, you'll clearly see that the victim was holding the cup in his right hand. But how? Well, Mr. Kudo, the court is waiting for your epic performance. You said you'd eat those seeds and sing the pigeon song. Mr. Kudo, I'm afraid this is simply not acceptable. I think the witness had better go back to the park where you something away. You think I'm going to stand here and listen to you tell me I'm mad? You're wrong. I don't care about that dirty coffee cup. I know what I saw. You still insist on your testimony. That young brat was holding the cup in his, in his left hand. Oh yes, no question. I'm a good law-abiding citizen. I am. It's that dead young popbot and you spiky-haired Yahoo who are at fault. Who, me? Yes, you. Couldn't be. Thank you, old man. We've heard quite enough from you already. Don't call me old man, old man. Been around for 68 years, I have. You can't ignore me. Listen to what I've got to say. I'm sorry, Mr. Kudo, but... Sure, why not hear a little more? Mr. Good... Mr. Kudo? Kudo Blend 10-fucking-11. This is my 16th cup of coffee, so this is your final stand. Thank you, Captain. You can rely on Victor. Man, he's drinking a lot off off camera. Left or right hand. The boy is wearing the earpiece on the same side as the green lens of, of, of his specs. Okay, so is that the uh, that's the ear that was blown out? So there you go. I think that's it. Can't wait for a trial to get serious, and he breaks his rule and he drinks his 18th cup of coffee. I'm sorry, master. Oh, just this once. I have to drink. 14th Sentinel. A boy was wearing the earpiece on the same side as the green lens of the specs. He kept fiddling with it all the time. He was fiddling with it just before he picked up the cup too. And then he used the same hand to pick up the cup, his left hand. We know the victim was wearing an unusual monocle over his left eye. It wasn't a monocle, your honor. It was a small computer monitor often used by programmers. What? Uh, a monitor? You mean like a television screen? The inside lens is a screen that displays computer data. It's called a HMD. It's a common tool in the victim's line of work. Okay, cool. HD, TV, DVD, CD, all these newfangled letters drive me mad, but they don't don't matter. I know what I saw, and I'm telling the truth. It's true. I'm wearing one right now. It's true, he doesn't seem to be lying. Those are the facts, in good old black and white. Left hand or right hand. The boy was wearing the earpiece on the same side as the green lens of his, of his specs. All right, can we just, can we just like, boom? Can we just rocket through this right now? His, his, his left, his, uh, left eardrum is ruptured. Can we just do this right now? Just boom, just right away. Just boom, one shot it. One shot, I'm not sure what the, the relevance of this is, but... Mr. Kudo, there is something very strange about your observations of the victim. What? You say he was wearing the earpiece on the same side as the HMD. No question, you can lock me up if I'm wrong. It was his left ear, without a doubt. I can only see that side of his head from where I was sitting. He seems really sure. Was it some sort of, like... Reflection bullshit, or... I can only see that side of his head from where I was sitting. I don't think so. What did you say? You're no doubt unaware of this fact, Mr. Kudo, but the victim couldn't hear with his left ear. His eardrum was ruptured. Eh? Traces of medication for his condition were found in his ear canal. That's right. It's impossible that the victim was wearing his earpiece in his left ear, because he couldn't even hear in that ear. Is that true, Captain? It is. P pigeon! <laughs> Pretty pigeon! <laughs> is that the pigeon song? Order, order, order! This witness's testimony is completely unreliable. He only saw the waitress from behind. 
and he claims the victim was wearing an earpiece when he when we know his eardrum was ruptured. Well, Mr. Godot? Arrgh. A single drop of milk is all it takes to destroy the pure black magic in the cup. This old man is my drop of milk. Captain, are you calling me a drip? I've never tried coffee just straight black. Hmm. This is the victim's this is the victim's coffee cup in which the potassium cyanide was found. The mark on the rim clearly shows that the victim picked it up with his right hand. I'll never back down, I know I'm right. The lad drank his cappuccino with his left hand. Let me put you out of your misery. Clearly, the victim used both hands. He took a sip with the cup held in his right hand and then switched to his left. That's what the old man saw. No, there's no mark on the other side of the cup! Impossible. The witness has already testified on numerous occasions that the victim died immediately after taking just one sip of the cup. Yeah, that too! <laughs> Which hand the victim used to pick up his cup is irrelevant, Your Honor. He drank the whole thing in one sip? Or no, it's stained all over the all over the table, that's right. Do, 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 do. Wouldn't wouldn't the rest of the cup get stained then? When it fell? Or no? The facts still stand with one hand or the other, Mr. L drank the poison coffee. Like this. Sally, Mr. Godot, that doesn't wash. The point of this testimony was to establish whether the witness's memory is credible. And the results are clear. The testimony given by this witness is useless. <sighs> useless. I believe it is time to conclude today's proceedings. I am satisfied that the witness is not deceived in the court. But to be frank, his testimony is a farce. Did you have to be so frank? Take that, you pompous old fogey. I'm sorry, Mr. Kudo, you can't reach me from there. Ha ha! <laughs> I have invisible plexiglass between me and everyone else. Ha ha! Your seeds can do nothing. <laughs> He just, he just sits there with his arms crossed, like, so fucking proud that he's untouchable. <laughs> I'm ordering the defense and the prosecution to investigate this case further. That is all for now. This court is adjourned. Now back to the bad part. Wait. If we stop now, where does that leave me? Leave you, Mr. Kudo. Thanks to that blue-suited young upstart over there, I'm just a bumbling old man who can't even dot his T's or cross his eyes now. How is your bad memory my fault? I'm sorry, Mr. Kudo, but there's nothing I can do. I've kept my mouth shut until now, but there's something else the court should know. What? There's more? To be perfectly honest, it might not be anything, but I want another chance. I want another crack at you, you young shark. Me? He's looking at me like I'm some sort of evil shogun. Well, everyone, what do you say to one final showdown? C can this- can we ever just stop proceedings without fucking Nintendo's one last thing? The final chapter in this eccentric old man scrapbook. Sorry, Gramps. I've already had my 17th cup of coffee. What have you got to lose, Captain? I'll give you all the Jabuccino you want if you come to my house after the trial. I may be 68 years old, but Victor Kudo is still a man. That's enough, witness. I believe it will be quicker for the court to just hear your testimony. You bet. Much, much quicker. I can't believe this is happening. Ha ha ha! You better get ready, youngster. I get the picture. Just quit throwing those seeds at me, would you? He's got to be using some sort of infinite ammo code for that box of seeds. I was just going to say, like, how is he not running out? The final showdown. Do -do -do -do. First of all, I want to stress that this might that might be nothing. I'm not too not too sure of myself. The young boy slumped over the table as soon as he took one sip of his javachino. While the clumsy idiot upset the vase, he knocked it right over. It broke, and the strip of cloth covering the table got completely soaked. Well, how about that? Turn things upside down, hmm? What? Um, is that all? Yes, that's all. I remember it perfectly. Eh? You're doubting me again? You're doubting a poor defenseless old man? No, no, we are not doubting you, Mr. Kudo. Don't you get the feeling there's a question hanging on everyone's lips, Nick? Yeah, so what? Probably. That's all I can think of, and I have to cross-examine this guy. You're a bird brain, that's why- that's all you can think of. Uh, very well, Mr. Wright. Your final cross-examination, please. I have nothing- I have nothing to say to him, Judge. Why would I get penalized for this bullshit? I don't- I don't care. Let's go. Okay, so this is going to be important. All right. First of all, all right. Um, the court generally prefers if witnesses are sure of themselves, Mr. Kudo, nosy brat. 
I'm warning you, I'm more savage than a macho man right now. You won't beat me with this testimony, this is the final battle. Ow, ow, he's chucking those seeds harder than ever, I better be careful. Come on, Nick, nail him! The young boy slumped over the table as soon as he took one sip of his jalapeno. The court has already heard the testimony, Mr. Kudo. I know that, I was just setting the mood. How else am I supposed to build up the suspense, hmm? The suspense? Yes, now what do you think? Should I work the audience a bit more? No, no, please continue, Mr. Kudo, as quickly as possible. All right, now where was I? Ah, yes, the young boy slumped over the table and... Doo. Well, the clumsy idiot upset the vase. He knocked it right over. What vase? A vase, you say? Yes, there was. there are vases on all the tables in that place. There are accidents waiting to happen. They're practically begging to be knocked over. Well, he's right about there being vases. I do remember seeing them, too. Okay. There was a vase on the table when I ate lunch there. All right, but he... They... They didn't... They didn't fix that. They didn't fix anything else, but they fixed that. And you saw the moment the victim... And you saw the moment when the victim actually knocked over the vase. Well, it's hard to say. It's a bit unclear. How do you really define... Okay, I get it. I heard a break, and the sight of it is burned into my memory as clear as day. It broke, and the strip of cloth covering the table got completely soaked. Strip of cloth? Soaked in water, you mean? Yes, it splashed on me. It splashed me on the knee as well. You said you were sitting at a table across the room from the victim, correct? And yet, the water still managed to splash onto you? I didn't say that. It was cold. I clearly remember it splashing on me. Could the water really make it all the way across to the other side of the room? Well, how about that? Turn things upside down, hmm? He's really giving you the evil eye, Maya. It's you he's looking at, Nick, not me. It's like he's saying, I triple dog dare you to find a contradiction, youngin. I guess I'll just have to rise to the challenge then. I mean, like... You mean the vase on the victim's table falling upside down and breaking? The vase turned upside down and my testimony turning this case upside down. It's a joke, I just wanted everyone to hear it. What do you think, Captain? I'm impressed by your, by your ability to waste time. Godot hasn't raised any objections for a while now. So, you young show off with this, that scrap of information, I'm throwing down the gauntlet. If I lose this one, I'll take it like a man and admit defeat. He's really giving you the evil eye, Maya. Alright, no. Okay. Okay, I'm a bit confused because then why didn't why didn't he why didn't they fix it? All right, so um, why isn't like this wet then? Because all this the what that's all over there. Why isn't this wet? How did this not get wet? I don't understand. Sorry. We, we decline our right to ask questions. Why isn't this wet? I kind of feel like it's more how how did he get how did he get wet? Is that even part of the testimony now? talking about okay I feel like this should work too does this work it's not wet so how is that not wet no it's not okay what else is in this photo
Where's the window? Why would he make that up? Oh, no! Oh, no! Mr. Kudo, this is a photograph of the crime scene. Humph, so what? Oh, no! Look carefully at the table. The vase is there, intact. Huh? Wash your tongue, Granddad? I'm no granddad of yours, Hopscotch. Ow, ow. Enough. If you throw any more shit, seeds or something. What is it now? I just remembered something. Yes, go on. The broken vase. Haha, <laughs> it was on my table. <laughs> oh, well, you see... It started... It startled me when that young man, young light collapsed, so I stood up. That must have been when it fell over. That must have been when it fell over. The vase on my table, I mean. The vase on your table. Ah, uh, yes, it was on my table. <sighs> and that's how my, my groin came to be completely soaked. Thank you, Mr. Kudo. You've certainly earned your kudos for today. Uh, I'd like to ask a question now. Have I, uh, have I been a good boy? Have I been any use at all? Perhaps that's something you should reflect on yourself, Mr. Kudo. Uh, wait, wait, wait a minute. If that's the case, there's more. I've got more to say. Oh yes, I remember something else. Bailiff, escort the witness out of the courtroom. Wait, listen to me. No, I mask the mask. Well, we seem to have been considerably sidetracked, and I am still not in a position to deliver a verdict. The defendant has not been positively identified as the waitress in question. Additionally, there are two disparities in the testimony we have heard thus far. The mark on the coffee cup that the victim supposedly drank from with his left hand, and the earpiece which was inserted into his left ear, of which, out of which he couldn't hear. I think everything that old man said should just be struck from the record. Like, there's, that's it. He's just, you're done. Wow, Nick, you did it. I therefore require both the defense and the prosecution to further investigate the facts. Yes, Your Honor. There is one more thing before I call, to, I call today's, today's session to an end. One more thing, Your Honor. Find out who impersonated you, the witness we just heard from. He is most insistent that his testimony should be of use. So he summarized it accordingly into this statement. Um, okay. You may each have a copy of it, if you wish. What? Whatever, the prosecution does need props like that. Kiddo's really mad, huh? Yeah. I would be too. Very well. Here you are then, Mr. Wright. There are three copies, my own, yours, and Mr. Godot's. Yes, Your Honor. Victor's testimony adds to the court record. When the incident occurred, I broke the vase at my seat. I'm sorry. All right, so this is gonna be important. I'm sorry, this isn't a piece of testimony, more like a five-year-old's apology. What the heck are we supposed to do with three copies? They're all a little different. <laughs> That's all this court is in <laughs> I love the judge so much. The judge is just my favorite. I love the, the fucking dumb judge so much. Oh god. <laughs> January 7, 12 at the 2 p.m. right in cold offices. So how do you think the trial went this morning? How do you think it went? It got a bit crazy in there. I just wonder if that killed our chances. Yeah, I guess it did get out of hand. Mr. Kudo's testimony did nothing to help us. Do do. Plus, now we don't even know the identity of the waitress who laced the coffee. All we know is what old Mr. Kudo saw, the apron straps and the ribbon, and that the, and that the victim was wearing an earpiece when his eardrum was ruptured. 
do do do. Talk about a terrifying case of contradic contradictitis. Time to play doctor and find ourselves a cure then, huh? Yeah. We gotta find one for Maggie or she's going to have a terminal case of guilty. All right, hold on. I, 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 I have to go. Jamie seven detention. Okay, I guess Maggie's still in questioning, but good. But we still got questions to ask her too. Maggie, Maggie, keep it down, Maya. This isn't the playground, you know. I want to go. I want to go. I ha I have to check the window. January seven Tribune, empty as usual. Yeah, and it's lunchtime too. That's it. Come on, come on, come on. Hey, that sounds like. Now I just call an an eight. Now I just call an eight, pal. Come on. I know you can. Now I just call an eight. He's getting really worked up about something. No, that's the wrong number. Arg, looks like an eight would have only netted me five bucks anyway. What a ripoff. What's the problem, Detective Gumshoe? Huh? Oh, it's you. I, uh, I was, uh, haha. -ha. I was just, ha ha ha. I was just listening to the radio, pal. To the radio? Hey, Detective Gumshoe's having lunch here. He is, and he's having the twin tea set. Ah, uh -huh, what can I say? Okay, the window would be a little hard to see from there. Wouldn't you be able to see the curtain, though? Oh, for sure. Oh, for sure. Okay, what does that mean, then? For sure. It's completely fucked. Okay, so if, if, that, if that's where it happened, this is the crime scene photo. Who the fuck took this? Who, t who took a photo from the scene taken from near the kitchen? All right, did did the, the chef take this or did did they take this? Because like that means he was killed like on on this side of the room. He was killed down here, but these have windows too. Right? Is it just is it just a mistake? Was it even in here? Is was it all was it all made up? Like what 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 the fuck? There's no no windows, Morty. Morty, there's no there's no windows. All right, like I thought like there was some like weird fucking shenanigans going on. Do 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 do. Do, do, like my my idea from, from when I realized that there was no window in the in the trial was that he was actually killed over here and then they took photos and shit and then 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 fucking like chef was like you know what this is bad for business let's move the crime scene over here hope no one asks there you go they can investigate if they ever come back because these these are the good tables this is the good side of the restaurant this is the good side what what the fuck is going on over here Whoa. One, two. Yeah, for sure. It's fucked for sure. All right. Today's trial. This is a nightmare. How am I supposed to look Maggie in the eye now, pal? You really drove her into a corner, you know. You always blow uh, apart my testimony. Why of all days don't you, did you do today? Sorry, there just weren't any holes in it for once. What about the painting? What painting? Oh, that painting? Um, I don't know if that painting is there or not. What happens usually, uh, yeah, what happened usually your testimonies are like Swiss cheese. Swiss cheese? Would you prefer crumbly like aged parmesan? Anyway, this case has already been ruled out, ruled on. There shouldn't be any holes left to find. So did Meg say anything to you about me, I mean? Well, um, how did she put it again? I can't believe Detective Gumshoe. I hate him, sir. I mean it. I don't ever want to see him again. Uh-oh. Something like that. Wow. Please, Detective Gumshoe. I didn't mean... Why? Why is this happening? He's banging his head against the wall. Nick. Oh, man. Poor Gumshoe. Oh, we can't... Oh, this is here. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, for fuck's sake.
but you should still be able to see the window, right? Or like one, two, th is that panel there? It, it's still fucked up, isn't it? Ro two roses thing over there. I guess it doesn't have to match exactly. That that could kind of be a cor the corner maybe from that from that mistake. I don't even from from that angle. I don't even know anymore. I don't even I don't even fucking know anymore. I don't even know anymore. I don't know. I don't know anymore. So did you like the, t the twin tea set? I've never paid that much money for lunch before. I was so nervous my hands were shaking. So how did it taste? Well, for 20 bucks, I guess. I don't know how to describe it, really. It was delicate. Delicate? You mean you liked it? It didn't taste bad to you? What's the matter with him? Looks like he's thinking. I don't have any taste buds, pal. That's it. I've been trying to think of the right word to describe the taste. And I just realized, it's bad. That's it. It, it tasted bad. <laughs> Sigh. I just kind of, it's just kind of hard to admit to it to yourself when you pay 20 bucks for it, you know? Maybe you should have found out about the price after he had finished finished eating. It's like when, when you spend $5,000 on getting Klee, and then it turns out she's terrible, but you don't want to admit it, but then you finally do admit it, and then you, it gets you so fucked off that you just go free to play. That's what that lunch was like for Gumshoe here. Hey Nick, maybe that's why Glen Elg came here. Maybe he heard about the Super Fierce Twin T set. If by fierce you mean fearsome, speaking of Glen Elg, that reminds me. We still hardly know anything about the guy. Clea is top tier DPS. So I, I don't have her. It's just a, it's just a meme video. Some, some big Genshin player like spent like five thousand dollars or two thousand uh, dollars getting Clea and all the constellations for for Klee. And was like, it, 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 like someone probably has the image somewhere, and it's like, Klee's gonna be great. And then the second video is like, I spent two thousand dollars on Klee, and then the third video is Klee fucking sucks. <laughs> it's fucking great. <laughs> Why don't we ask Detective Gumshoe what he knows, seeing as he's here? Do 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 do. So what were you all excited about earlier? Huh? That's right, you said you were listening to the radio or something. Oh, that? That was nothing. I wasn't excited. Come on, Detective Gumshoe, you can tell little old me what you're listening to. Nothing, really. It was just the, um, daily exercise show. No. Oh, one lock. Okay. What the? A psyche lock. Ha ha ha. Mmm, this lunch special's lobster sure is great. Then why are the, there are tears in your eyes? I spent all my money on lottery tickets, pal. Do, 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 do. Can we just can we just do it right now? Thank you, Cashel, for the six month resub. I think I said thank you to you already, Cashel, but there you go, you get another thank you, just in case. Thank you, Kuze the Yazoka for the bits. Thank you. Kuze! Uh, and thank you, Velp13, for the two month resub. Thank you, Velp. Uh, and we're about to take a break. I think my phone's gonna start vibrating any second or any minute, but we'll keep going until it happens. All right, Seth Gumshoe, tell me the truth. What were you listening to? No way, pal. Now you've made a big thing out of it. I'm not gonna tell you. We'll see about that, pal. Considering all the noise you were making while you were listening, it's pretty clear what kind of radio program it was. I'd say it was related to the lottery. I'm right, aren't I? You were listening to the lottery results, weren't you? You thought you'd try to win big just like Len Elg did. It's... It's like you can see right through me. Damn, that was easy, huh? I cracked him already? See, pal? That's why I said it was nothing. Unlock successful. I'm usually pretty lucky, so I figured I'd give it a try. What's with everyone in the lottery? So, how'd it go? I won 50 cents. It'd be better to win nothing at all than half a lousy buck. I was so mad. Yeah, I know the feeling. I bought the same kind of ticket as Mr. Alex, see? And they've got this special radio show where they announce the winning numbers. They even do the drawings live on the air. It's intense, pal. I bet that's what Mr. Alex was listening to on the day he was killed. 
Yeah, what time is it now? Uh, it's... it's just after 1.30. And are lottery results always broadcast at the same time? Yeah, look, I got this flyer when I bought the ticket. Millionaire radio flyer added to the court record. Experience the most thrilling 10 minutes of your life every Monday at 1.30 p.m. Millionaire radio, that sounds cool. I want to try it, Nick. Then buy a ticket, Maya, with your own money. That's the only way you're getting a thrilling 10 minutes out of me, Maya. All right, let's go. All right, what do we have to present to, to Gumshoe again? I think Maya said something, right? Let's just fucking present everything. Where'd you get this? Apparently everyone's listening to the this sh this show now. That's because everyone wants money. They say that the victim, Glenn Alleg, was really into gambling. Yep, you can't beat gambling. I love it too. I won $500 last night playing cards with Nick. Huh? We were playing for money? Of course, so you better pay up. You're a smart one, waiting for a cop to be present before asking for the cash. Do, do, do. We never did find the contents of that bag. It was medicine for Mr. Elg's ru ruptured eardrum, right? Yeah, we found traces of it in his left ear canal. He must have used it while he was at Trey Ben. We're sure of that much. What do you think about this? I think I'm sure. Sorry, pal. Where's the green one that you were doing a, uh, a analysis of? That's the apron Maggie was wearing. Yeah, it still smells like her too. And ketchup. Does this mean Maggie smells like ketchup? Yeah. Yep. A one-way ticket to happiness, huh? Glenel died because of this ticket. Yeah, but it's still a one-way ticket to happiness, pal. And Maggie was found guilty of murder because of it too. Yeah, I was just I was just hanging out when I heard someone win the lottery. So I so I whipped out my trusty bottle of fucking potassium cyanide and got on his coffee so I could steal his ticket. I just carry it around just in case I need it. That's that's what was happening. Anyway, uh, thank you Cubed Hexagon for the new sub. Welcome, welcome. And thank you Gilligan Pants for this three month resub as well. Thank you. I'm gonna go take a break. I'll be back in five to 10 minutes. Uh, I highly suggest that you do so as well. It's not very good for you to, to uh, stay seated for more than two hours. That's why there's an alarm now because it's really, 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 really bad for you. Go ahead and walk around. I'll see you soon.
All right, we're back. Okay, so if we can get this investigation done in an hour, then we will continue with the rest of the chapter, assuming that the trial is just as long as the other trial. Um, we'll still take a break in two hours, no matter what. Uh, if it takes longer than an hour to get through this investigation, then uh, I guess we're going to be calling it early and we'll just continue uh, on Tuesday. Uh, I would prefer to have Ace Attorney 3 done before, um, before the Cyberpunk stream, though, if we're going to do that. So I guess we'll see. Uh, thank you, Princess Shi or Princess Shy, for the uh, 26, 26 month reset. Thank you very much. Mangu is found guilty of murder because of it, too. Okay. Let's see if we can get through this fairly quickly. Uh, looks like anything about Maggie is an instant conversation stopper. Yeah, he's got a real soft spot for her, and it obviously hurts when you hit it. We think about this thing, she did nothing. Okay. We think this thing, she All right, who took the crime photo? That's it done. All right, so let's go in to the kitchen. Huh? Mr. Armstrong's talking to someone. I'll be back next month. We oui, natural mint. I will. We'll be waiting for you. All right, not creepy at all. If you haven't got it by then, I'm afraid it might get a little hot around here. No, I will have everything ready, I promise. Yeah, crazy fire starter for sure. I love fire, you know. Yep, there we go. I love the way it crackles. He, he, he. No, 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 stop it, I beg you. Then don't let me down. I'll be watching you in my swimsuit. Mas non, this is not necessary. You can trust me, mademoiselle. Talk to anyone and I'll drive a knife right through your heart. Oh man, she's just getting better and better. Oh no, you don't, you don't have to worry. You know, you worry far too much. Maybe this will help you relax. It's, it is the oil of sandalwood. Sure. I do love raw meat from time to time. He he he. Uh... I'll be taking my leave. Goodbye for now. Ugh, I have the shivers. I must rub some of my oil all over my body before I become a nervous wreck. There, oh, wee oui, wee, oui, that feels good. Erg, oh la la, oh la la, excuse moi, monsieur. My eyes, my eyes. Your eyes, if you have trouble with your eyes, you need this, la oil of sandalwood. Isn't this just leftovers of what you were just using? You don't exactly have many customers, do you, Mr. Armstrong? No, you are right, monsieur. Uh, but perhaps that, that is the perfect time for you to visit me, no? That way I can give you my undivided attention and cook for you la dish supreme. Putting on a brave face, huh? That's what girls do, Nick. But you are right, business is very difficult these days. Perhaps the name is La Problem. People do not understand it. They think it is Trey. I just wanted people to think that my restaurant was exclusive, but they think you just serve fast food on cheap plastic trays. N Nick, that's the kind of thing that can make a girl cry. Have you forgotten that Mr. Armstrong is a man, Maya? If you make a girl cry, but this restaurant is my life, it is everything to me. I will defend it to La fin Finale. No one will take it from me. The woman just now. So who's that woman you were just talking to? Oh la la, you saw that. Ah uh, well, yes, yeah, sorry. So, who was she? She looked so polite and graceful. <laughs> polite and graceful. And she likes raw meat and fires, right? I mean, those two don't go together, don't, don't they? Raw meat and fires? I'll be back next month. We are natural men, I'll be waiting for you. Yeah, we just saw that we don't, we don't, we don't know. We, d uh, I guess you could go somewhere else before you and then come here. Hey, Maya, I think it's pretty clear what kind of conversation they were having. You think so? Well, then let's show him that piece of evidence and see what happens.
Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, right. So long as that paper exists, I am I am but a delightful angel with the broken wings. An angel, huh? Doesn't bode well when you think about it. We, they kept erasing me uh, month after month. In the end, I had to give in. I agreed to help them. Help them? With what? It must be Sarah. If I did not owe them the money, I wouldn't have refused. I would have refused, but my hands were tied. Please. What did you agree to help them with? No, I cannot say. If I tell you, that woman, she will slice me up and eat me with the salad garnish. I hope he doesn't mean that he'll literally be sliced up and serve a garnish. Yeah, probably. I'm going to guess that woman has something to do with loan contract, am I right? Ah, please, Mr. Armstrong, tell us about that woman. No. The woman who was here earlier, I take it that she's, um, why has it come to this? What a tragedy. Suddenly I find myself so deep in La Debt, it is a sign of La Bad, Bad World we live in, huh? No, I'd say it's more of a sign of a la bad, bad culinary skills. <laughs> so woman who was here got him. This is a scary woman. She is from the loan office. Loan office? Is that where you borrowed half a million dollars from? We oui, tender lender it is called. Catchy name. Just hearing it makes me want to borrow some money. Please, you must not borrow from them. If you must, no more than ten dollars. Ten dollars? Sounds like your whole monthly stipend, Maya. Hey, I get a bit more than that. Thank you very much. So tender lender is the loan office you borrowed half a million from, huh? I wonder if they've got anything to do with this case. Tender lender, where is it? Let's go. I'm a weak woman. Where, when I am upset, I have to buy something nice to cheer me up. Thanks to him loaning me the money, I have to pay back half a million dollars now. I am like a, a slave. I have to do everything that he tells me. Um, who's this he? The tiger. The tiger. We. Oui, he is the manager of the tender lender, a terrifying man, the big city mobster. When he shouts at me, my knees are trembling, and his voice is ringing in my ears for three days. As soon as I hear the noise of the battered old scooter he rides, I start to cry. What? A big city mobster who rides a battered old scooter? Um, does this guy resemble me by any chance? Oh, no, no, no. This man is a presence. As a presence, a most formidable personality. Although, oui, he does have the spiky air just like you. Oui. There is a resemblance there. Uh, there, I suppose. Uh-oh. Hmm. Sounds like this loan office is worth checking out after all. Alright, cool. If you want to visit the tender lender, it's just beyond Vitamin Square. Hey Nick, if you need money, I can lend you some as long as it's less than $3. Um, thanks for the offer, just beyond Vitamin Square, huh? Just while we're here, just to get them out of the way... If only I had taken the right lottery ticket, I would not have any deaths right now, I would be free. Look on the bright side, Mr. Armstrong, you want a dollar, right? A lack of remorse for having stolen something priceless. Okay, and I think that is everything. Alright. Oh wait, what about the broken vase? Yeah. Ah, it's true, my vases are broken all the time. I bought a new one the next day after the accident, but they wouldn't let me put it on the table because of the investigation. I mean, but it's, it's, it, but, 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 it's... Do, do, do. Do, 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 January 7th, Vitamin Square. Hmm, I don't see any sign of Mr. Crudo, do you? Maybe he went to buy another ton of burr seeds. Uh, I was kind of hoping he wouldn't be here anyway, at least not for now. Besides, any more seeds today, and I'm liable to turn into a real phoenix. Got him! Hey, check this out. I wouldn't get too close to that if I were you, otherwise you might be in for a shock. My phony must be lurking someplace nearby. Just imagine a tiger loose in the city. Meanwhile, the real phoenix is like an abandoned chick lost in a vast urban jungle, huh? Don't worry, someday you'll grow up and become a ferocious tiger too. Don't lose hope. Why is she trying to pep talk me into becoming my phony? Oh, this is not as uh, crazy as I thought it was going to be. Went through compromise. Tender lender. Damn, so strong he, he broke the punching bag. This place gives off a really strange vibe, doesn't it? Looks like the tiger isn't in his lair. And that is, as they say, a very good thing. Welcome, gulp. Talk about a creepy voice, it makes your soul want to shrill up and die. Welcome. You're here to discuss alone. Super, super, super. Oh, uh, no, not exactly. The manager is away at the moment. Wait quietly, please. 
I'm a nuisance. Oh, CDs. She's gone just like that. I guess we'll just have to come back another time. But this is the perfect opportunity, Nick. This place reeks of suspicion. Come on, Nick. Let's take a look around, okay? Do you think it'd be okay? Of course. No one will... Coffee. Oh, poison coffee. Ah. Uh, I'll leave it here for you to enjoy quietly. Yes, thank you. Do not touch the desk, please. Is it made of solid gold? Nick, let's get out of here. Now she wants to get out of here. I'm touching the desk. There's a CD player on the desk, but the desk is so loud. It's a wonder you can hear it. What? The lid's open. I wonder what kind of music the tiger's into. Have you finished the coffee? Ah, uh, yes, thanks. It was lovely. So you drank it all? He, he, he. And then they died. If you touch anything else that doesn't belong to you, there's always another cup. That coffee, it was laced with something. I'm almost sure of it. Nick, my stomach, it's killing me. Oh, wait. Maybe it was just the burger I ate for breakfast. I sure hope sh I sure hope so. We better take a look at that CD while we're still alive and have a chance. What the? What? It's not the Rocco soundtrack, is it? Claw of the Tiger? Rocco? It's it's a demo CD. The artist's name has been handwritten on the disc and pen. MC Bomber. What? This must be the CD Maggie told us about. Let's listen to it. I bet it's heavy metal. No way. That woman will make us drink more coffee if we do. MC Bomber adds to the court record. Found at the tender lender a sample disc with a name written in marker. Did we steal it? Let's see, the round doll thing is called a Daruma, I think. I figured I'd read a book or two and be, be more cultured in case you're wondering. You mean you aren't making stuff up for a change? Heh, I bet you also didn't know that no matter what, he'll always write himself. Go on, Nick, give him a good shove. Only if I feel like dying. Now, this yellow thing, this is this is a Japanese chess piece. I think it's a king. Not that I'm expert or anything, I'm more of a reversey person, you know. As soon as she knows what she's talking about, the, these aren't exactly your typical mobster wannabe items. They're not trophies, are they? Gulp. Hey, there's a piece of paper sticking out from under here. What is it? A repair bill? Looks like he did some re repair work on his car. Does he even have one? 15000 to replace a bumper and a light. That's insane. The car's registered to the Cadavernies? Huh? So it's not even the Tiger's car. Why would someone else's repair bill be in the Tiger's office? Repa How is this relevant? What? Oh, now it's Tigri. Uh, okay. Hey, look at this Par Parisian style coat. It's so cheap. It looks more like a pimp coat to me. I guess I haven't got an eye for fashion. Hey, look at this. This is the same color as the one you wear, Nick. Hmm, the same color as my suit. Ah, he's the ultimate cosplayer. Keep your voice down, Maya. And Nick, you've got to take a look at some cake. Ah, uh, I'll just leave it here for you. Uh, yeah, sure, I am, thanks. <laughs> just wait here quietly, otherwise. Sure, did you hear that, Nick? Wait quietly, she said. Yeah, sure. I have my eye on you. Only so I can take care of you, understand? Uh, I'm scared, Nick. So, what were you getting so excited about before? Look, on the lap la lapel of the suit. The It's not even close. It's not even close. My god. My god, is the tiger a lawyer? No way, look at this thing, it's made of paper. That's all it took to get into the... <laughs> For some reason, your badge suddenly looks really cheap to me, Nick. Why does anyone recognize an obviously fake badge when they see one? Is he gonna go come in and Maya's gonna be confused? Who's who? Went through compromise. I wonder what that's supposed to mean. It means it must mean something if they took the trouble to frame it like that. Yeah, well, it still doesn't make any sense to me. That. Ah. Uh... 
that's Tenderlander's guiding principle. Oh? Compromise uh, the customer to win. <laughs> oh, I see. How about you, Nick? Um, well, as long as we don't have to compromise my hair, I'd say we're okay. That's one slogan no business owner should ever explain to their customers, Shudder. What's this? It's a punching bag. What? No way. You wouldn't catch me walking around with a bag like that. What do you mean, walking around? The design's gross to start with, and it's way too heavy to be practical. And why is it called a punching bag? Don't people know messenger bags are in? I knew it. I was right before. Back at Trade Band. Paris fashion is more my thing. I really, really hope she's blowing my chain on this one. That, that's one impressive desk and one impressive rug. It's solid gold, Nick. Gold? Just look at that shine. Only real gold shines like that. Would you really want such a shiny desk, though? Too loud. I don't know, but let's see what it's like to sit at a solid gold desk. No, don't. She'll come back. Wow, it's completely daz I'm completely dazzled. That's because it's, it's completely dazzling. I can see up my nose in the reflection. That's got to be really distracting. So the desk isn't practical. No surprise there. All right, what happened down here? Oh no, someone dropped the ashtray on the floor. That's going to be a nightmare to clean up. Yeah, it's all over the rug and everything. I accidentally knocked over a really big space heater once, cleaning up was such a pain. Such a pain. It was one of those super antiques where you have to burn a ton of charcoal. How did she manage to knock one of those over? Aren't they supposed to be super heavy? Oh hey, there's a book of matches here too. Trey Ben. Hmm, matches, huh? Places don't give those out much now those out much nowadays. Hey, wait a second. What is it? Look what's printed on the, on its cover. It says Trey Ben. Trey Ben matches added to the court record. These matches could come in handy. We might be able to use them. Yeah, to get out of court early. Yeah, the pilot light for the office boiler, boiler keeps going out. Swing and a miss, my ass. Swing and a miss. Alright, guess we inspected everything. Yeah, well, I'm having fun. Uh, come out from under the desk, Maya. What are you two snooping around in my office for? Kiru, no nothing, we were just... Whoa, my precious carpet, you've got ash on my rug. You're gonna wish your ugly feet never came through my door. It wasn't us, it was already like, you wanna argue with me? Is that what you're doing? You you think you use can take me on? Think you can take me? I'm gonna flatten use two like into pancakes and turn use turn use into my new rugs. Ah uh, oh, don't Don Tiger, you're back. Act of voice. It's like evil seeping into your head through your, into your head through your ears. I'm sorry, Don Tiger. Don't Iger. Don't eager? Hmm. I knocked over that ashtray earlier and Eek, has she got a death wish or what? Nah, he's scared of her. Oh right. Huh? Forget about it, Violetta. It's 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 not in What 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 are, th are these like Bizarro, Phoenix, and Maya? Is it I am? I ain't gonna get mad at you. You too cute, you hear? That's so unfair. Here, have some cookies. I just baked them. And you'll need some strong espresso while you're discussing your loan. Gwaaah! Phoenix right. Yes? You's either crazy or just plain stupid to chase after me. I worked so hard, but now you's gotta come and mess up my plan. So it was him. He's my phony. Yeah, but I don't care. Why are you orange, my dude? Or, or red? I don't care, no one gets in my way. What? I mean, excuse me? <laughs> you should have left the little girl at home, right? Um, I have a few things- ah, No questions. This is the last time we meet. Alright. Ah, wait, please. That was pretty weak, Nick. You waited until he was out of your shop before you shot after him. Like you wanted to talk. Moves are weak. I didn't hear you scream, hold it either. The espresso. Ah. And cookies. This woman is definitely not good for my heart. Now, what was it the tiger called her? Violetta. Tender Lender. So, I'm kind of curious about your company, Tender Lender. Viola. 
With the warm and friendly atmosphere you'd expect from a family-sized business, a conscientious rate of interest, and an attractive repayment policy. Why do I get the feeling the sentence is not going to end well? We will tenderly lend you that little, that little bit extra here at Tender Lender. Hey Nick, things are a bit tight for Wright & Co. at the moment, aren't they? I mean, there's that $500 you owe me from our card game for starters. Why don't you take out a loan? Would I like to take out a loan from a place like this? Not so much. Tender Lender is on your side. He he he. So um, let's say I'm late with my repayment. What happens then? We give you more coffee. Strong coffee. Um, right, I think I'd rather skip town. Hey, just remember I can make strong coffee too, Nick. Strong tea as well. Wow, she's just, just admitting to it. Just admitting to it. What happened? So, um, do you know about the institute we're investigating? What institute? Well, a man was poisoned in a restaurant just near here. That incident. Let me see. I was here that day with the manager. The manager being the tiger. Furio Tiger. Furio. Tiger. So that's where tiger, the tiger thing comes from. Zinyop's got a real name. Nick, hurry up and find out more about him. What about Dawn? Can I ask you about the tiger? I mean, Mr. Tiger? Cookie? Sure. How do you like my cookies? I bake them myself. He he he. With my blood. Go ahead, Nick. The honor is all yours. No, no. Ladies first, Maya. He he he. No matter how I look at this, I just don't get it. What are the tiger and this scary girl doing wor doing working together? We are lovers. The sign is actually coming across in your tone of voice. And I owe Don Tiger my life. He's the one who saved me. The tiger saved you? Please address him properly as Don Tiger. Otherwise, I'll have to. Okay, so Don is a title. And his real name is... I've already forgotten what his real name is. <laughs> I hope it's on its list. Okay, okay, Don Tiger, of course, I'm sorry. He saved her life. I'm sure I'd sure like to know how that happened. Alright. Furio, there you go. <laughs> um, about this. More coffee, you must have more. Okay. What do you think of this guy? Um, about this. Uh, you don't care. Alright, what about this guy? You don't care. Alright, what about this guy? You don't care. Alright, what about this guy? You don't care. This is the one. What about this girl? Alright, you don't care. Alright. Wow, she doesn't care about anything. Okay, do we have to unlock her or, or what? Like, she really doesn't give a shit? I'm very frail, you see. Just recently, I died. Once. He he. You died? About four months ago, the doctor said to abandon all hope. Oh, the music! I came back different from the other side. I guess they were expecting her to take a boat ride across the River Styx. But Don Tiger... He saved me. He gave me... He gave up everything. Everything? Wait, his name's Don and he's orange? When I found out what he had done for me, I was happy. No offense, but I'm finding that a little hard to believe. I decided I'd pay him back with my life by serving him coffee and an espresso. I still wonder about what's in her coffee. So, is that why you got that bandage around your head? He, he, he. This? It's decorative. The head bandage. Um, so what's the story with the bandage? They put it on after the operation. Operation? It's just a little injury. A little fatal injury. He he he. A fatal injury? Maya just suffered one herself by the sound of it. So that's the injury you were talking about before when you said you had died once? She looks like a nun there. Erg, she really creeps me out, Nick. Same here, but we've got to find out the truth. Do we? Alright, there's no way that we have all the information for this, but let's go. The head bandage. You said that bandage around your head was from an operation. You also said you suffered a fatal injury to the head, correct? 
Yes, the operation was very difficult, apparently. Now, by fatal injury, you mean you were hurt very badly somehow, right? He he. The injury in question has something to do with this. The bike is injured, right? The wheel guard. Or the ashtray. Uh, it's gotta be the bike. Well, donuts? Huh? I baked them myself. Homemade donuts. I have one. Um, what's inside? Jam and... I'm sorry, but I didn't quite catch that. He he. Um, thanks for nothing. Okay, so no, it wasn't anything to do with that. Okay. It was months ago, so I I don't think I have it. It has something to do with uh with millionaire radio. Oh, car bill. Okay. There you go. I have your car repair bill. From this, it seems pretty obvious that this car was involved in an accident. Let me see that. This bill is made out to the Cadaverenis. Yes, it is. I don't think I ever introduced myself. Tell me, what do the Cada Cadaveren Cadaver Cadaverenis have to do with me? Fucking hell! Viola Cad Cadaverini. Something tells me she's not about to say hi and introduce herself. All right then. Your relationship with the Cadaverenis is very strong, and this is why. R1? Your, your family? How do I say that by presenting evidence? Try her. So, would you have to save yourself now? Pretzels for you? Oh man, we got pretzels. Don't worry about the little white specks on the surface. I just sprinkled a small quantity of. No, thanks. My evidence must be half must be half baked. All right, so I guess we don't have it. All right. Do I have enough evidence yet? All right. I should investigate and gather some more clues before I try again. All right, let's go to, go to Gumshoe and say, hey, what do you know about this girl? There he is, old CD's back feeding the pigeons again. There, take this and this and get out of my park. Like I thought, he's really mad. Come on, Maya, just keep your head down and let's sneak away while we still can. What, why, Hel hello, old man. What are you doing, Maya? Huh, Ka. Hey, he just turned his back on us. I'm not surprised, I bet I really hurt his pride in, the court, in court this morning. Hey, Mr. Kudo. Hmm, ha, hmm, 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 the pigeon, hmm, ka. Look, we really need to talk to you, all right? Out with the demons. I'm good. I'm with good fortune. Ow, ow, ow. Seeds. Shell splinters. Painful. I always knew you were a demon, Maya. Today's trial. Oh, I'm sorry about what happened in court earlier today. Ka. Everyone will be talking about me behind my back now. A dirty old man who was so busy looking at the serving girl's backside that he can't remember her face. A filthy, depraved animal. Not at all. Are you listening to me, boy? I don't care what you say. I saw that waitress... I saw that waitress put it in. She put some white powder into the young lad's javachino. Yeah, it's, it's definitely Viola. We hear you. And another thing, the young layout, layabout was wearing an earpiece on the same side as the lens of his broken spectacles. We're really sorry. So I made a little mistake about the vase. So what? I know what I saw. I tell you, I tell you, I tell you. Okay, okay, take it easy, please, Mr. Kudo. 
Don't tell me to take it easy, you spiky hair brat. Take this. Embroiderer. How is that important? Um, you said you were a craftsman, right? Ka, the modern world casts honest craftsmen like me aside in droves. Surely it's not that. Come, I come from a long line of craftsmen, right back to the time of the shoguns. Was that a typo? Did it say Sean Guns? Never mind. Do you hear me? I didn't become an embroiderer. I was born one. Actually, I'm kind of in the same situation myself. I, I, I wanted to stick my fingers up that dribbling old judge's nose and scream right down his ear hole. Objection. Yep. Yeah, that's how it goes. Oh, so did you want to become a lawyer when you were young? I don't think that's quite it, Maya. I think he's just in a bad mood, that's all. I got a tsunami of frustration inside and it's ready to burst out. If we let him start rambling now, we might never shut him up. What should I do? Cut in. Suck it up. Suck it up! Guess I better let him talk. So, there's not much call for craftsmen these days, then. Of course not, you idiot. All I'm good for nowadays is running errands. Errands? Everyone takes advantage of the elderly. Buy some bread, Gramps. Take the dog for a walk. Granddad, feed the pigeons, old man. What am I? Some sort of two-bit community handyman? Um, well, buy some bread, now that I can understand. But what's the point of feeding some seedy pigeons? Why don't people say what they mean? Get lost, that's what they're trying to say. Oh yes, I'm just an inconvenience, you see. At home, at that restaurant, I just get in the way, don't I? I'm sure you don't. Wait a minute, what did you just say? At home and at that restaurant? Hold up, by restaurant, are you talking about Trebian? Did you get asked to run an errand there too? Yes, I did. The very day that young brat was poisoned. What? What was the errand? So on the day of the institute, what were you asked to do? Glad you asked, boy, because I'll tell you what I was asked to do. I was I was told to fetch a clock called the Thinker. All of a sudden, that young lad slumped over the table. The serving girl collapsed. And I broke that vase. It all happened so fast, I was in a bit of a daze, you see? Then the owner shouted over to me. Excuse ma. You, call the police. Call them yourself, I, sh I should have said back, but I didn't think of it at the time. So did you end up calling the police? Like I said, I was in a bit of a daze. Did you call them on your cell phone? Ka, do I look like I'd have one of those newfangled thingamajigs? I went out looking for a payphone, of course. You went looking for one? I couldn't find one right away, you know? Wandered around for five minutes or so. Five minutes? So for five minutes after the institute happened, Yes siree, the owner was at Trade Ban on his own. Why didn't you mention this in court this morning? Well, I would- I thought we already knew that! Well, I would've- I would have if you'd given me the chance. I- we knew that for sure, didn't we? But if you- but you all bullied me out of the courtroom. So I thank you, Mr. Kudo. You certainly earned your kudos for today. Wait, wait a minute. If that's the case, if that's the case, there's more. I've got more to say. Oh yes, I remember something else. It's not my fault. You're the ones to blame. You could have at least told us before we got to court. Is it really that important that Mr. Kudo was the one who called the police? Yes. What's important is the unencountered time uh, before the police arrived. The victim was dead and Maggie was unconscious, which leaves that woman, I mean that man, alone in the restaurant. Mr. Kudo might have been chased out of the place on purpose. What do you mean? Maybe a certain someone didn't want him in the restaurant. Ah, oh sure, you go ahead and say I was in the ways usual. I suppose I should have been getting myself covered in pigeon poop instead, hmm? We need to get more details about, ex about what exactly happened from Maggie and from Mr. Armstrong. Alright. Hey, do you know anything about, about her? What about this guy? No. What do you make of this? Sorry, pal. Fuck sake, man. Really? So Mr. Armstrong is out again, but the place is open for business. You can't have an open restaurant without a chef. Hey, it's not my fault, Nick. Don't take it out on me. Only a couple of minutes after the institute happened, Mr. Kudo left the scene, leaving Mr. Armstrong here alone. 
Do, 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 do. Arg, missing when we need to talk to him the most. Maybe he's trying to avoid us on purpose. That, 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 that could be it, yeah. Okay, uh, I don't think we need to inspect anything around here. Well, let's inspect this, just in case. Now, now this is one large mirror. No, it's the same thing, okay. Do, 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 do. Huh, that's it? Yep, that's a poem for you. Okay. Uh, I think that we're going to the detention center. I've never been more wrong. All right, let's go to criminal affairs and look look uh, Viola up. Well, I officially lost to us as to start. Yeah, me too. Let's try some brainstorming. You first, I guess we should try to put Mr. Kudos Sesame to sort of some sort of use. Yeah, that's true. And we need to figure out the identity of the waitress and who the victim really was. Somehow, I think the key to this case has got to be a trade band. Well, then let's go back there and check it out again. Oh, and we should drop in on Maggie and see how she's doing too. All right, any ideas? So, anything on your mind? Actually, there is something. I was wondering about Zin Eop, you know, like what what he's like and stuff. Okay, so we should have did this earlier, so uh, we um, we, uh, skipped this, so yeah, that's it. Oh yeah, I almost forgot about that guy. I had to beat you so hard, it'll feel like you were, were smooching the express train. Phoenix Wright. You saying you, Phoenix Wright? Because I'm Phoenix Wright, the one and only. Actually, I've learned a little something about my doppelganger, huh? You did? What did you find out? Oh, yeah. Maya was working at the restaurant when I ran into Don Fu, whatever. Let's just say he was such a terrible version of me that I wanted a super defamation. What's that guy's story, anyway? What does he have to gain by impersonating me? January 7th. Looks like she's not here. Never mind that. What's going on? It feels different in here somehow, you think? Yeah, everyone seems to be on edge. What are you doing? Calling officers for the briefing. Quick. Can't you shut down the station server? Chief, quit playing on the internet. But my email, pen pal, Leet. Leet. Asian princess? Save it for later. I'm turning it off now. No. <laughs> Everyone's keeping busy in here, huh? <sighs> keeping busy? More like some. I just skipped over that, sorry. Something's going on, something big. <sighs> Examine. This must be the chief of the detectives here. He looks lost now that he. Now that the power to his computer has been cut, oh well, I guess I'll just have to write her a real letter instead of an email. Alternatively, you could write up some reports, just a suggestion. Dear Leet Asian Princess, how are you? I'm okay. How was the show last night? Wow, what an awesome job. Maybe I should send in my resume and become chief. That must be one of the detectives. He's mumbling something to himself. Even pickpockets can have their pockets picked. That's a keeper. Better go to some with something that doesn't sound too much like a slogan. He must be coming up with slogans for a crime prevention campaign, but I'm not sure even he knows what kind of crime he's trying to prevent. Alright, can we go look at the computer? These are the detective's desks. There are computers and files on each one. Funny, they're a lot tidier than I expected. I guess the detectives don't spend a lot of time with their desks. Okay, what is going on here? A poster of a female police officer. Wait, no, that's the latest. Babes in uniform calendar, my bad. Alright, that's still a thing. Um, alright, now is Maggie Bird here, or... Huh, I thought we could do something there. Did I present all the new stuff to, uh... To, um... To Gumshoe? I did, right? Yeah, for sure. And I presented... And I did all this already with him, right? I didn't? Oh, is there something I'm supposed to present to him? Okay, let me go present all the profiles to him then. Because we did all the evidence, I think, for sure. 
you're looking at feet as usual, usual, and you're looking tired as usual, the type of gumshoe. Yeah, that's life, huh? One, one guy's got it all, and one guy's got squat. Is it just me, or did the room get darker all of a sudden? You know, detective, this is the year of the, um, gum. It is? Yeah, I think. Gum, huh? This is gonna be a great year for this old gumshoe then, right? Look at that, he perked up in no time. Maya, don't mess with him like that. Alright, what do you think of Mia? She crossed the enemy. Okay, we did- I remember doing this. I remember doing this. Mr. Godogi, Yeah, I remember doing this too. Maggie's probably crying all alone right now, huh? Yeah, I can see you. Arg, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Maya, don't tor torch poor Gumshoe's feelings like they're cups of cheap creme br brulee. You're really crazy about Maggie, aren't you? No, no, no. I'm just... I'm not. It's not that I... You don't have to hide it. Gumshoe, it's pretty obvious. Yeah, you're way too plain looking for Maggie, right? I'd arrest you right now if you weren't so right. Okay. This guy was a real programming genius. They called him the walking computer at the place where he worked. What happens when he crashes through? I don't- I don't think- I don't remember seeing this. What- what they said about Markiplier. I'm not sure. What happens when he crashes, though? Does he just stop moving all of a sudden? Groan. He wasn't literally a computer, Maya. Anyway, there's nothing between Maggie and the victim. Yeah, that's what we found out yesterday, too. Hey, Detective Gumshoe, don't you have any information that's a bit more fun? Fun? I, uh... Oh, I know. So, have you paid a visit to where Mr. Elg worked yet? You might as well. Shh. Shit. His workplace, where's that? A computer firm called Blue Screens Inc. Or something like that. Oh, I remember that. Sounds like a real stable company. This could be fun. Let's go. Computers aren't really my thing. But another character will be fine. I know all about that high tech stuff. I wonder about him, about that, or something. It's just around the corner from this joint. You should take a look. Convenient. A computer firm called Mr. Called Blue Screens Inc., huh? Well, I'm gonna head back to the precinct now. We've got a big meeting starting in a bit. About Maggie's case, you mean? No, that's pretty much wrapped up now. There's another big case going down at the moment, so she's been pushed aside. Okay, we'll see you later then. In our swimsuits, bye. Alright. Oh, The investigation, like, this seems a bit better than the other one, but man, the investigation is still drag. You better get going, detective, or you'll be late. Actually, I, um, I kind of got a favor to ask. It's a big one. Can I have some cab fare or whatever? Favor? Yeah. It's for, uh, um, Maggie, actually. I was kind of hoping you'd give this to her for me. Just a bunch of rice and hot dogs? What is it? It's a lunchbox. I got up early so I could make it. Here, Here's your lunchbox, Maggie. It's, it's fucking 30 hot dogs. And, like, if that's a hot dog, then, like, that's just so much rice. And enough rice to, to feed five families. It's a lunchbox. I've been real worried about her. She looked like she'd lost a lot of weight. Detective Gumshoe. How many weenies are in here? There's not a person on earth who could down this much meat. You think? I love weenies. I can't get enough of their tender juiciness. So will you give it to her? It took me ages to make, so please say you will, pal. I can't exactly say no, can I? Gumshoe's lunchbox given to Maya to carry. <laughs> a tenderly handmade lunchbox fills the stomach with love and plenty of weenies. Maybe I'll eat it myself if I get hungry. Don't forget, okay? I'm counting on you to give that to Maggie. Damn, I think she's gonna throw it in her face. He's finally gone. Alright, what horseshit's gonna be here? Oh my god. January 7, Blue Screens Inc. Wow, this place is so high tech. You can almost smell the electricity in the air. They're playing League of Legends for sure. It is a computer firm, Maya. They can't work without electricity, you know? Who are you? Take it back, favorite place. Oh, um, hello. I'm sorry, access is restricted to authorized personnel only. This is a computer programming laboratory. There are far too many trade secrets that could be leaked. Wow, what secrets? Everything you see here is classified. No information can leave this building. Understood. Who is this woman? She's like a robot from some kind of whacked educational show. My name is Lisa Basil. Lisa ba Basil? Lisa Isabel? Lisa, Lisa Basil? Also a palindrome. What? Okay. I'm the company director. Director, she's human. She seems more like a ghost in a shell. 
and that thing over her eye. Isn't that the same device as Glen Elgs? That's a DMH, right? Nice try, but it's the other way around, Maya. It's a HMD. All of my programmers here at Blue Screens Inc. are supplied with HMDs. Then do you write programs too? No, I just enjoy wearing this and also killing people when I sneak into restaurants to poison their coffee. They are pretty cool. I wouldn't mind one. You can't have one. This is a very unusual character design. Okay, blue screen sink. So what exactly is this firm's business? I will try to simplify it so that you can understand. We analyze the data management systems required by certain branches of industry and then deliver optimum operating systems and source level components to them. Huh? You lost me on the corner of analyze and management. It doesn't matter, they analyze stuff. You got that much, right? The software we produce is distributed on CDs. CDs? Yes, compact disc, digital optical storage media. Of course, CDs are used for software as well as music. It is a small firm, but all of my employees are first-class programmers. Let's ask one of them what they are doing. I'm playing League. Excuse me, what are you working on right now? I'm researching the impact of time slicing, common technological structure, global variables. Obviously, program structure heavily influences response time and in performance, so the code independence of global variables and memory overheads is vitally important to the success of the execution. <gasps> well, you get the idea. This is the sort of thing we are involved in. He's on Reddit. Did you get? Do you good people follow the, all of that? Yeah. Your blank smile just said otherwise, Maya. You know about what happened, right, Miss Basil? You mean about Glenn being poisoned? Yes, I know. It's terrible. I was there. Can you tell us anything that might be helpful? I don't think so. A police officer was here earlier too, but I couldn't tell him anything either because the waitress who committed the crime has nothing to do with Blue, S with Blue Screens, Inc. Blue Screens. Oh. How about Mr. Elk's desk? Have you cleared it out already? No, not yet. It's this one right in front of you. If there's anything that might be useful to you, you are welcome to take it. I guess there might be a clue here somewhere. It's been a month, hasn't it? And you still haven't? That's kind of unusual. Huh. Wow, look at this mess. Looks like they're all betting tickets. What kind of betting tickets? For betting on which horse will win a given race. They're horse racing tickets. Oh wow, his drawers are stuffed with full of these. Looks like they're all losing tickets though. Glen Elg's losing horse racing tickets gathered up. 500 of them. Holy shit. This many tickets would get you, what, a buck down at the recycling center? But I didn't know you were so hard up that you tried to profit from the, from the dead, Nick. I'm just talking, taking them as evidence, Maya. He's really pounding that keyboard, isn't he? Wow, I bet that's where the pro and programmer comes from, huh? Oh man! I guess I shouldn't be resting on my laurels. Gotta expand my skill set and all that. Yeah, that's a good idea. Maybe I could become old C's apprentice. Um, and what about your spirit medium training? Nah, fuck that. Is this manga? Wow, look at this desk, Nick. What a mess. Looks pretty average to me. But you can't get any work done with everything all over the place like this. You think real whiz kids can work under any condition, you know? She's trying to hint that I should try to tidy my desk more. I'll clean up my desk when Maya stops asking silly questions. No hurry then. Hey, this calendar. It's in the shape of something. It's the thinker. What about it? If this is another hint about tidying, you can forget it. Someone's marked December 3rd in red pen. December 3rd. That's the day Mr. Elg was murdered. Is there anything else? Yeah. Um, it says, meet with the tiger. The, the tiger? Glenn's calendar added to the court record. Meet with the tiger. Hey, look, Nick. It's a supercomputer. It looks like it's really smart and wise, doesn't it? Computers are only as smart as the humans who use them, Maya. That explains why we don't use the computer in our office. You work there too, Maya. Yeah, but at least I'm... Please, don't argue about something that's so trivial. Otherwise, the computer will laugh at you. Makoto. She said she'd laugh at us, Nick. She's a human, Maya, not a computer. I mean, I'm not really that convinced, to be honest. Those pillars look almost like they're moving. It's kind of unsettling. Nah, they just look a bit twisted or warped or whatever word I'm looking for. This office was designed with a futuristic feel in mind. Nah, futuristic? Yes, we tried to imagine what things might look like in the future when we designed it. It helps to soothe something about soul and calm, maybe. I hit the button, I'm sorry. On second thought, I agree with you, Nick. This place is really unsettling. Alright, are we done? All 
Alright. I'm a lawyer. Um, would you mind taking a look at this? I'm sorry, that data is super admin restricted desktop password access password protected. What? Super admin restricted desktop access password protected. Super admin restricted desktop password access password protected. That's so hard to say. What? This is madness. No, Maya. This is Sparta. No, Maya, this is Sparta. She won't tell us unless we say the right code. The right code word. That movie's fucking great, isn't it? 300 is fucking fantastic. 300 is the second best movie that I've ever seen at the theaters. Like, that was just such a great experience to, sh to see at the actual movie theater. It was just such a, a huge spectacle on the screen. It was such a good movie to see at the, th the theater. Second, second best. Number one. Number one, watching watching at the movie theater, best movie experience, uh, theater experience of my whole entire life, was Mad Max Fury Road. That was so fucking good. I'm not saying those are the best movies ever. They're they're great movies, but for for movies to see at the theater, to see the the huge thing, man, th those were good. He has seen two movies. Thank thanks, Merrick. Thanks, Merrick. <laughs> yeah, Mad Ma Max Fury Road was um, was the, the best movie to see in the in the uh, in the theater. No, my, this is Sparta. A code word, hmm? Sesame. Says me. Accepted. If it's not Sesame, then it must be her mother's maiden name. That's how it always is. There's no point in having a password if it's always the same thing, Maya. I guess she just doesn't want to talk about this. Maybe we should focus on asking about Glen Alec, what do you say? Oh, this is a really long, you gave the wrong evidence thing. Might as well just save and load. Um, about Mr. Elg, he was a top programmer, I would even say he was a genius. But he did suffer from one or two bugs in his personality. Oh, like what? He was a bit of a loser, perhaps that would be the best way to describe it. That's what got, got him into trouble. What's the matter? He was a top programmer, I would even say he was a genius. So he was... So he was really no trouble at all, a model employee. Hey, wait a minute, just now you said something about him being in trouble. We've got to find out what this trouble was ex Trouble was exactly. Okay, can we talk about it? Glenn's troubles. Um, about Mr. Elg. He was in some kind of trouble? I'm sorry, why would you think that? I thought you said something about it just now. You said he got himself into trouble because he was a bit of a loser. Fuck. Three psyche locks. I just realized Glenn Elg is a palindrome. Yeah, so's her name. I guess Mr. Elg is like every other man with his own pile of secrets. A miserable pile of secrets. Alright, let's break through this right now. Glenn's troubles. So how about you tell me what kind of trouble Mr. Elg was in? I'm sorry, sir, but we don't deal with troubleshooting here. Perhaps you'd like to speak to someone in customer service. What's she talking about? I guess I'd better take a shot and just see where it gets me. Miss Basil, let me ask you something. Did Mr. Elk's troubles have something to do with this? Uh, the tickets. What is that? A bunch of horse racing tickets, all losing ones. With that many tickets, you could get one dollar at the recycling center. Yeah, that's what Maya said. You good people are very, very bad. Cashing in on others' misfortunes is immoral. Is that a whiff of hypocrisy I smell? But what is the relevance of these tickets? The victim, Mr. Glenn Elg. He had a gambling habit, didn't he? I don't think that's a logical conclusion based on the facts. Everyone likes to go to the races from time to time. There are 500 tickets. Yeah, but not everyone buys this many tickets. Anyway, I don't believe that proves anything on its own. Did Glen Elg play Genshin Impact? You're right, but I'm not through yet. Mr. Elg's gambling wasn't restricted to horse races, was it? Alright, uh, the lottery ticket. Or this. Yeah, victim's lottery ticket. Take 
the lottery horse racing he bought a lot of tickets and lost a lot of times that's got to have hurt his wallet pretty bad don't you think oh she's sweating she's she's overheating maybe bad enough to be the cause of some pretty serious trouble perhaps no you're right glenn did have a gambling habit you good people must not follow his example do you understand trust me even if i wanted to i don't exactly have the money to buy any but if you win there's no problem is there and glenn had a winning ticket didn't he for half a million dollars yeah but it's hard to imagine how he could have been in trouble then isn't it it's true that mr l won half a million dollars in the end but that was his first stroke of good luck he was in deep trouble before that deep trouble what do you mean mr l's real problem was was something was, was someone or something more terrifying and ferocious uh meet with the tiger number 15 burger king foot lettuce mr l met with someone on the day he was killed he even made a note on this calendar about meeting about the meeting meet with the tiger what is the relevance of that? Maybe he just really likes Frosted Flakes. Are you trying to suggest Glenn was meeting with, with meeting him to discuss his debt? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Thinking I'm back. But I have never heard anything about this tiger before. Maybe he's not even human. Maybe he really is a tiger. I'm no programmer, but does she really expect me to buy such messed up logic? In that case, I think it's time to introduce you to the tiger. Furio Tiger, aka The Tiger, is the boss of a loan office called Tender Lender. It kind of bothers me that you have to present multiple pieces of evidence for each psyche lock sometimes. It should be one lock, one evidence. That's how it should be. This is who Mr. Elg met with on the day of his, of his murder. And the only thing a loan truck would t talk with him about would be his debt. No. It's true that Glenn had racked up quite a bit of debt from his gambling habit. About $100,000, I think. $100,000? Ouch. But I heard he won the lottery, so he should have been in the clear. Shame Maggie couldn't get a bit of that good luck. Okay, so the guy got lucky and won the lottery. But what if he hadn't won? What was his plan then? Well, this isn't easy to say, but he has two kidneys. He said he would use his talents to repay the money. His talents? I suspect he was talking about programming. What computer program is worth $100,000? An illegal one. Perhaps you good people should leave so I can get back to my work. I'm so close to cracking her. The program in question, was it by any chance this? Do, 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 do. Mr. Robot, where is it? This is a very delicate matter. Without the necessary data, shh. What? I know Mr. L created some sort of program. She can't deny if I show the program itself as evidence. I'm so close to cracking her. The program in question was, do I have to go? Do I have to go to the police station and put it in a computer, and 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 run it and then find out? Fuck. Oh. That's it, isn't it? That's it. Jeremy Seven Detention Center Visitors Room. Oh right, Mr. Wright. Oh hello, man. Okay, so I don't think we're gonna be doing the, finishing this chapter here today, everybody. Like I think we're gonna finish the investigation and then we'll be and then we'll call it and then um and then we'll be uh, back on Tuesday to finish that and start the next one. Uh, I don't know how we're gonna finish this time for Thursday though. Maybe we need to do an extra stream. Maybe we'll do a stream on Monday. Let's see. Hello, Maggie. So they finished questioning you. Wasn't it just unbelievable in court today, sir? I'm going to stay up all night and blog about everything that's happened. Weren't you scared? It was pretty touch and go in there. Yeah, but you totally nailed that old man. Well, he was all over the place with his testimony. He's not the only one. Huh? What do you mean? Everyone else, everyone else's testimonies don't match up either. Not with what I remember of the incident, anyway. Is it possible she's the one misremembering things? Oh yeah, I've got something you're going to love. Really? What is it? A lunchbox, just for you. Here. Wow, a lunchbox. Weenies, too. I can't believe it. Thank you, sir. Did you make this just for me, Mr. Wright? Nah, it was Detective Gumshoe. Who else would make such a nice lunchbox for you? Detective Gumshoe? Man, she's not gonna be consuming the gum chalice at all. She's really mad at him. He's really worried about you. Looks like you put a lot of effort into making this, too. 
can't accept it. The tension center rules. No gifts allowed, sir. Hey, come on, Maggie. Don't be like that. The rules are the rules. They'll lock you up if you break them. Somehow, with an ex -cop turn waitress, when an ex-cop turns waitress says that, it seems a whole lot scarier. And anyway, I hate weenies. No, you don't. Oh, really? It's all yours, Maya. You can enjoy it with Mr. Wright. But, but, she's right. It's better than money. Go to waste. But, I guess so. Come choose lunchbox. Eating with Maya. Well, how was it? Ah, hurt the spot. I love weenies. Oh good, I'm glad I gave it to you then, sir. Maggie, you know how you said that everyone else provided testimony that doesn't match up with what you remember? Yep, there are just so many things that don't seem to add up. The biggest contradiction is the other guy I saw at the victim's table. He was the one who slipped something into the victim's coffee. I'm sure it was him. How, look how there's no, suspiciously no background of, of for this art. But didn't Mr. Kudo testify earlier today? That it was the waitress who put some white powder into the coffee cup? Let's put some love in our coffee. Rainy day Wednesdays. So you really think it was this disappearing man that did it? Well, he's not the only thing that disappeared. The CD vanished as well. You know, the CD with the writing on it. Oh yeah, the, the MC Screwdriver album, right? It was MC Bomber, Maya. That name was scrawled on the sports paper as well. They never did find that CD at the crime scene, sir. Or the victim's medication. That's gone missing too. Ouch, my head. This is getting way too complicated for me. You said that you passed out when the victim Glenn L collapsed, right? Yes, it's so embarrassing. I mean, I used to be a cop. When I came to, the restaurant was buzzing with police. And before I knew what was going on, they arrested me, sir. Were you drugged too, maybe? Like, really? Or did you just pass out? So between the time the victim collapsed and the time the police arrived on the scene, you have no idea what went on at Trey Ben. No, no idea at all. Why? Is it important, Mr. Wright? The other witness, the old man from the park, was pretty much chased out of the picture. Chased out of the picture? What do you mean? Old CD wasn't inside the restaurant because he was told to go call the police. Exactly, and you, Maggie, were unconscious. That means Mr. Armstrong was alone in the restaurant for a brief period of time. No. You don't think Mr. Armstrong set me up, do you? When you consider the facts. Is such a thing possible? Yes. It's hard to imagine that Mr. Armstrong isn't involved in this at all. Grr, it's like the master biting on the paw of the dog that, that it feeds. Are you sure about this, Mr. Wright? Well, the old man said as much when we spoke with him earlier, and everything he said before has been really accurate. I don't know. The things that the man says don't add up for some reason, sir. Maggie looks like she's trying to figure something out. Maybe we should ask Maggie exactly what she knows about old CD. Oh, where is he? He's here. My bad. Uh, I feel much better after the tri this trial this morning. I've been in a I've been a bit of a courtroom proceedings addict for years now. It feels like forever since I saw a witness as slippery as that old man. He's not really that bad of an old man, though. Still, I feel a bit uneasy. Huh? I thought you just said you felt much better. Maggie, if there's something on your mind, you've got to tell us. Especially if it has anything to do with Mr. Kudo or his testimony. Roger, I'll spill all of it and see what you make of it. Okay, what do you know? What do you think about him now? Well, in time to the victim was the call, the only person who Okay, I thought it was gonna be the same thing as last time. So then why'd they hit it? I don't know. The only person who was on the scene and had any chance to do anything was Armstrong and there's no one else there. Mr. Armstrong wouldn't he wouldn't set me up, would he? Okay, what do you know about her? I know you used to be on the peace force, sir. Okay, you don't know anything about her. Alright, what about him? Holy smokes, that's him! Huh? That's your phony, Mr. Wright. Just look at that ridiculous suntan. Suntan? Um, for the record, I'm not sunburned like an overdried tomato, so I don't know how. He told me he'd been on a business trip to Hawaii, and that's where he got the tan. I'm not hearing this. With Chadworth. I know you see Oh, you don't care about the CD that we found? Ah, is that your attorney's badge? Actually, it's a fake. Holy smokes, that's it, huh? That's the badge your phony had, Mr. Wright. You got duped by this? But it's a completely different color. And what about the fact that it's made of paper? He said the badge got a tan as well while he was in Hawaii <laughs> on business. I'm beginning to see how my phony was able to gain her trust. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Is there anything about Mr. Kudos testimony that said I was odd to you? Actually, yes. The fact that he was in, that he was even testifying to begin with doesn't quite it doesn't quite what. Well, when I took the coffee over to the victim's table, it's true there was another customer in the restaurant. Yeah, we know that already. It was Victor Kudo, but I can't really say it was an old man. Okay, then how about calling him a really old middle-aged man? No, age isn't the issue. The other customer was a woman. A woman? Are you sure, Maggie? Well, I'm not 100% sure, but I think so. So, what did this woman look like? She looked scary and evil. She was sort of creepy. And she had kind of a cackling laugh. Creepy? Cackling? Why do I get the feeling I've come across a woman like that recently? Okay, but I just showed you her picture, and you didn't say shit. I know you s Is it her? Did I hit the wrong thing? No, this is it. We're done. Okay. January 7th, police station. Criminal. Okay. Minister just went up in smoke. Why the heck isn't the press conference set up yet? The superintendent's here today, here already. Yeah, and there's a problem with the internet too. I already told you stop using your computer, chief. But I'm watching videos online. I'm catching up on my Asian soap operas. I have to wait. It's gonna have to wait, chief. I'm throwing the switch. No, just when some young young guy was about to. <laughs> Son, to his son's hot to hot to trot girlfriend. <sighs> wow, this place is really buzzing. Something must be going down, something really big. Huh? What are you doing here, pal? Detective Gumshoe. You can't be here right now. You'll be roped into the briefing if you stay, huh? We've got big problems here today. Why? What's going on? It's a virus, a virus. A virus? There's a virus ripping through the precinct precinct's computer system. But I really need to ask you some questions. Tender lender. Okay, I'm only going to say this once, so listen up. Yes, no matter how poor you get, never borrow money from a place like this, you hear? Um, okay. If you, go, if you got money trouble, just go on a diet of instant noodles and hang in there. Right, we're not thinking about borrowing money, detective. We want information. Oh, is that all? Well, let's see. Tender lender is considered to be even fishier than the average illegal loan shark, and it seems it ran into trouble just recently. Those guys have been pretty heavy-handed, calling in all their debts. Really? Don't go poking your nose around in their business, pal. You'll really regret it if you upset that lady. All right, I get the picture. Hey, wait a minute. Lady? What did he just say? That lady? Who's this lady he's talking about, Nick? We better find out what the story is with this lady. So what exactly is a computer virus detected gumshoot? I don't know. What? Look, I just go with the flow, all right, pal? And here I thought detectives were supposed to be somewhat knowledgeable. What's with that face, pal? You think you know you think you know what a virus is? Well, Nick, do you? A computer virus? Sure. I mean, only in simple terms, of course. Really? Wow, you know everything, Professor Nick. Yeah, I'm gonna call you Dr. Wright from now on. Hey, that sounds pretty cool. Don't you agree, Dr. Wright? Why well, do I get the feeling they're making fun of me? Okay, fine. I'm no expert, but I can at least explain the basics to the two of you. What's a virus? A virus is a program that gets inside a computer and causes damage. Damage? You mean it makes the machine go boom and explode? No, the damage is, um, well, it's all internal. So the inside goes boom, right? Imagine all the case data you've got stored on your PCs here in the station. A virus could wipe out all that. That's, that's the kind of damage I'm talking about. Wow, that's scary. Yeah, and what's even more scary is that the vi that viruses are infectious. Infectious? Most computers are connected together on a network, right? A virus can move from one machine to another over the network, so the virus just keeps spreading faster and faster. Hump. Just like a real virus, huh? But Nick, why would anyone want to, want to make a program like that? Yeah, it takes ages to type in all that data. Why would you want to destroy it, pal? So it like, corrupts cases and shit. No, people don't infect their own machines. They send the virus to someone else's. What? That's horrible. Oh, I get it. It's like you sneezing on Mr. Godot so he catches a cold. Right, then he wouldn't be able to turn up in court because he'd be too sick. You really shouldn't do stuff like that, Nick. It's wrong. Who, what, where, when, and why did the conversation jump to talking about me? 
Anyway, that's what a computer virus is, a bad program that causes damage. Yeah, Phoenix is a lot smarter when he's not on the screen, huh? There, there is a sharp fucking dissonance between courtroom on the screen Phoenix and talking from the from the fucking player's perspective Phoenix. All, and, and all the different viruses have names, right? I kind of feel like I've heard the name of the virus you caught somewhere before. The name of the virus, huh? I feel like I've heard it, heard of it before too. What's a virus? All right. Um... That's the girl who works over at Tender Lender. You want to stay away from her, okay? I mean it. She does look kind of unforgiving, doesn't she? That should be the least of your worries, pal. What's that supposed to mean? What could be worse? Her name is Viola Cadavereni. She's the only granddaughter of Bruto Cadavereni. Well, he seems like a nice man, Bruto Cadavereni. Do you know who that is, Nick? Never heard of him. Bruto Cadavereni's the boss of the Cadavereni family. The Cadavereni's? That's one scary sounding name. We can't touch them, they're way too powerful for the police. But you're thinking of taking them on, aren't you? No, I don't remember ever saying I was going to. I better get some more info out of Gumshoe about this family. Hey, can I put this? Can I put the CD on your computer? Don't you? Um, that does something really cool. Oh shit! It is something. The name scribbled on the sports division CD. That's the name of the virus. MC Bomber. What? Yeah, the virus has just infected every computer in the station. Pal, it's MC Bomber. Can you give us any more details, please? I'm not sure if I really want to get involved in this, but who are the ked cadaverenis? Who are they? A scary bunch of people, that's who. You're a cop and you're scared? What's that about? Trust me, it doesn't matter if you're a kid or a cop, these guys are scary. They've got some serious clout in the criminal underworld. We can't touch them, they've got too much moolah. Moolah, as in, they pretty much control all the cash on the city's black market. The black market, huh? And that includes Tender Lender, I take it? Sure, no one stands up to the to Bruto Cada Cadavereni, and I mean no one. Interesting. So Viola is the granddaughter of some, maf of some ma mafia boss then. Yeah, and everyone knows how much Bruto loves his little girl. She means everything to him. So, how did she end up at Tender Lender? I don't know, pal. But I heard she and the boss of Tender Lender are pretty tight. Tight. That's what it said in a file I read related to Maggie's case. Sounds like a pretty important clue. Thank you for sharing it with us. You know, after a trial. We already know about the MC Bomber virus from a while back. A group of criminals issued a series of demands to the head of honchos of law enforcement. They threatened to release the virus if their demands weren't met. We thought we were fine with the Steel Mountain backup, but apparently that's been compromised too. Who are they? I don't know. Some hotshots from the criminal underworld would be my guess. And now the virus has been released, huh? Yeah, it's in every computer in every public office in the city. Everyone's going nuts. They're hopping around like like they're dancing at a carnival. All this stuff with criminals and viruses, it almost feels like we're in a sci-fi movie. <laughs> Apparently the programmer who made the virus was a real genius or something. The focus right now is on tracing the root of this virus on the black market. You mean someone put this virus up for sale? Yeah, and because this one's so powerful, they're estimating its price tag was in the millions of dollars, pal. In the millions? A virus can be worth that much? MC Bomber updated in the court court record. So now we can go back. I can't believe it. I almost forgot the most important thing. And that is, you know, the lunchbox. How did everything go? Lunchbox. You remember the weenies? I hate weenies. Oh yeah, those weenies. So how did my weenies taste when they went down the hatch? They were really good. Um, well, it was delicious. Yeah, that's what she said, really? Um, well, not exactly. Don't worry about it, pal. I figured something would happen, so I came prepared. Prepared? What do you mean? A second lunchbox! I made a jumbo lunchbox! Oh, do me a favor again, huh, pal, and deliver this? This sure is a heavy burden. In more ways than one. Good thing we're Lydia. I can just imagine Maggie's little eyes sparkling with joy when you bring her that. Weenies again, Nick? Tell me we don't have to eat all these, too. I'm hungry. Gun choose lunchbox. Get into the night again. Just, I really can't eat anymore. Oh, she's gone! Oh man, who are we giving weenies to now then? Oh, he's still not here. Alright, time to do it all again because that's the system that we have here. What a wonderful system.
I hope this is better in, in, in subsequent games. Okay, so what was it? It was the tickets first, and then the lottery ticket, and then the calendar, and then uh, fake phoenix, and then the virus. So if you weren't here earlier, we've already did this and we didn't have the last piece of evidence to break the last lock, and you have to repeat it because that's how the game is. I skipped over it. It's here. Well, this is it, isn't it? This is the virus that's infecting computers worldwide as we speak. MC Bomber. No. Unlock successful. Glenn's, Glenn's head had more processing power than any computer, but it had been infected with a gambling virus. Glenn was in too deep. You mean he was in debt? Yes, $100,000 in debt, not an easy amount to repay. So, he said he was taking on some extra work, something a bit risky. Risky? How? Maybe he was going to become a waitress at Trey Ben. Where did you come up with these ideas? Risky extra work. So it's safe to say Mr. Elg was the creator of this virus, huh? The MC Bomber virus, yes. It was a work of genius, in a bad sort of way of course, but still genius. Something like that would probably fetch several million dollars on the black market. Inconceivable, Gumshoe is right for a change. Okay, so he was so he was meeting a uh, dude who is who is doing things at behest of, of Kadarani family because he's he's being held. So Kadarani family is putting pressure on this guy to, to get um, to get some solution or something, or I don't know. And so he he's being pressured and he's putting pressure on him, uh, t sorry, him to from through his debts at Tender Lender. So then he goes with with the virus to sell to him for like a shit ton of money or clear the debt. And then as he's about to give him the CD, he he wins the lottery and now he's like, well now I don't want to do it, I don't have to do it, fuck this deal's off. And then he gets mad and or she gets mad or some, something, something goes down because he wants to back out at the last minute after he, he get, he finds out he doesn't do this has to do this shaded shady shit anymore that's what i think inconceivable gumshoe is right for a change this this date december 3rd this is marked on his calendar that was his that was his deadline for repaying his debts i guess we won't be needing these horse racing tickets anymore glenn alex losing horse racing tickets from back on the floor but that's a dollar the recycling plant use a trash can nick all right, and now are we would are we done now? Can I just present this to you for more information, just in case? Oh no, we're doing Sparta again. Still not back. Maybe he doesn't come back. Why does Glenn have a taco cot name? I forgot the word for it. Palindrome? Uh, we don't know. She, that character we just spoke, spoke to also has a palindrome name. I don't think anyone else does though. Yeah, he does. And uh, so does she. tough all right so we did this already and uh we got stuck pretty pretty uh early 
Okay, and this is why you're related, because you are one of them. And that's it. Okay, so this is all new after this. I know exactly who you are, Viola Cad Cad Cadaverani. It's a hard name for me to say. You, sustain you sustained an injury in a traffic accident, didn't you? Uh, thank you, Dashaway22, for the 16-month resub. And thank you, Cat Hands for the 37-month resub. Thanks so much. And we'll be finishing up soon, I think, because uh, I think we're at the end of the investigation and we're going to stop it before we get into the trial. And then we'll start next stream. Uh, probably, I think we're probably going to stream Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday next week. And Thursday will be the end of the stream week with Cyberpunk um, instead of streaming Tuesday through Friday. I think that's what we'll do. And then, and that way we can get Ace Attorney 3 done before Cyberpunk. It happened about four months ago. I was driving in one of our family's cars when someone pulled out in front of me. It was a motorbike or something like that. I don't remember it much. Anyway, I served to try to avoid it, but... Oh, the scooter was involved! I took a blow to the head, a bad one. Yeah, I can imagine. No Game Awards then? What is the Game Awards? Same day that Cyberpunk comes out? Wow, how bold of them. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, we'll see. We probably should. So I'm gonna press on the bike. I'm guessing they didn't get away with injuring the Viola Cadarani, right? I don't know what happened to them. They ran away, or so I heard. Ran away. If they'd stayed, I'd have... He, he, he. Hmm, is it possible? Could the person who committed the hit and run have been? Do, 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 do. It was this man, wasn't it? He was the cause of your accident. It wasn't Don Tiger. I refuse to believe it. We collided. The motorbike and my car. But Don Tiger isn't injured at all. Is he? It was, a, it was the tiger who caused Viola to crash. I can feel it. Plus, one of her locks just broke, so she must suspect it was him too. I'm so, yeah, that's how it works. I'm sorry, Miss, Miss Cadaverani. But I have proof that the tiger was involved in this traffic accident on his bike. The injured scooter. It's not exactly a motorbike, but Mr. Tiger rides around on a scooter, doesn't he? And you'll notice that the front wheel guard is badly damaged. And his helmet. Miss Katarani. You know the truth, don't you? He, he, he. This repair bill, repair bill was paid by Furio Tiger. The Katarani's have known for ages who caused the accident, haven't they? It's possible, perhaps. Somewhere inside me, I know that that may be true. I knew it. But, Don Tiger still saved my life. The operation was very complicated. It was very, very expensive. How much are we talking? Very, very, very expensive. She seems kind of hesitant about giving me an actual figure. I should back off. Well, anyway, it was the tiger who paid for it, right? After I recovered, Don Tiger told me. He said he paid for the operation because he cared about me. I believe him. Really? But do you honestly believe that to be true? Do you want to know what I think? I think the reason he paid for the operation wasn't because of you, but someone else. Leon. Perhaps I shouldn't be saying this, but your grandfather, Bruto Cadavereni, controls a lot of dubious cash, right? And you are his beloved pride and joy. Sure, I don't know exactly how much the operation costs, but if you weren't the granddaughter of Mr. Cadavereni, do you think Mr. Tiger would have paid the money? One million dollars. Honestly, that's a lot less than I thought it was going to be. That's a lot of fucking money. But, like, the way she said very, 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 and where she comes from, the head bandage. Four months ago, I was in a traffic accident. That's why I needed the operation. When I woke up, they told me it was nothing serious. A simple procedure. Oh, really? Well, I guess if she recovered in four months, it couldn't have been too big. They said the operation cost one million dollars. A, a, a million bucks. 
Are you just being taken for a ride? Is there anything, like, are you fine? My grandfather ordered Don Tiger to pay one million, one million dollars in compensation. Okay, I guess not then. Compensation, huh? It's underworld lingo, undercourt lingo for paying money to settle a score. Basically, pay or get into some serious trouble. But a million bucks? Yeah, definitely based in America. This has to be related to our poisoning case somehow. I wanted to believe him. I wanted to trust what Don Tiger said. He said it had nothing to do with my grandfather being Bruto Cadavereni. I wanted to believe he helped me because he cared about me, not about my grandfather. Aw, the evil girl sad, but I knew that wasn't really true. Wow, I'm so sorry. What he did to get the money was, it was evil. And I liked it. He said it was all for me, so I... I helped him. You helped him? In what way? Here, take these. What are these? Medical papers? I'm Bruto Katarani's granddaughter. He had to pay compensation. He was made an offer. He simply couldn't refuse. Nice! Oh, this is gonna be a slam fucking dunk in trial tomorrow. A one million dollar bill for cranial surgery payment was due last year. Right, because it's January. Okay. Wow, I feel so bad for Viola. It's inexcusable. Huh? There are two things that I consider inexcusable. Poisoning and putting ketchup on eggs. Only a coward would hurt people using either of these tactics. Is everything alright, Nick? We should get going. Right after we finish our, our espresso. Yeah. Da -da 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 -da. I won't need to convince Viola of anything else, so I guess I can get rid of this. Repair bill thrown into the trash. We're, s we're not done? Do I have to talk to you about something? Hey, bonjour. I have been waiting for you to return, Mr. Armstrong. Ah, good timing. I was hoping to find you here. We'd like to ask you a few questions. Well, he hasn't got anything to say to you, fellas. Oh, shit. It's Zinio. Who you calling Zinio? Ah, come out from under the table already, Maya. Under the table? Okay, hand it over. What? You just want to play games with me? I don't recommend that. The medical papers now. How do you know? Uh-oh, I think he wants Viola Cadaver and his papers back. You mean this? The million dollar medical papers? Miss Cadaverini trusted you. That's why she said that she helped you. Forget about it. That girl's dumber than an eggplant. Whoa, you just want to know what's sad? I tell you what's sad. And it ain't only her face. She thinks she's got power because she's Bruto's little girl. Now that's that. Oh, you're a dick! I can't let you have these papers. Tomorrow in court. I thought you were just going to be like some, some dumb guy that's been strung along. Now nah, you're an asshole. Alright. I'm going to expose what you did to get the one million you used to pay this off. Are you crazy or something? I don't care if you want to give it to me or not. There's two of us here. You got that too. Er, oui, oui, oui. Mr. Armstrong? Forgive me. The sole, I cannot argue with him. Ugh, that really hurt. Aw, oh, man, it's like when Von Karma tasered us in the fucking uh, evidence room. Is that all you've got? I'll be taking those papers now. Armstrong, get that lighter. Wait, don't take it too hard, Phoenix Wright. Merry Christmas. That was so stupid, I shouldn't have let my guard down. Those medical papers were vital evidence. Hold it, pal. Uh-oh. Well, Gumshoe's gonna die. Detective Gumshoe! Detective Gumshoe? You think you're gonna stop me, Detective Gumshoe? Beat it. Blah. Whoa. Come on, Gumshoe. Keep it together. You guys, get out of here. Leave this guy to me. But go, pal, and take this. If you get hurt, who's gonna look after Maggie, huh? All right, thanks, Gumshoe. Wait, Nick, don't leave me behind. I'll get even with that guy tomorrow. In court! Tenderlander is going down. 
some point we're gonna have to eat these weenies. At some point the weenies are gonna be vital evidence. The weenies will be important. Oh, all right. So we're at three hours and forty-five minutes. So not that bad, actually. Not not too far under. Um, I would continue, but uh, I have a feeling that this is going to be at least two hours, um, and that's uh, that's going to be cutting close to six hours. And yeah, I don't think that's a good idea. Uh, so we're going to stream on Monday, I think. I can't promise because I don't I don't know what's going on because I don't usually plan to stream on Monday, but uh, if I can stream on Monday, I will stream on Monday. It's possible we'll be streaming on Monday. Um, I'll probably put in stream announcements at some point, at some point over the uh, the weekend on uh, on Discord if you want, if I, if I decide on Monday. Uh, so that's it, and then we'll finish this case on Monday, and then hopefully we can get through case four and five on Tuesday and Wednesday by doing some longer streams. I'll, I'll prep myself for that. And then on Thursday, we will um, stream Cyberpunk 2077. Sounds good. All right, uh, before I go, thank you, DDDO, for the four-month resub. Thank you very much. I said thank you to Cat Hands tonight. Yes, I did. I remember. Okay, that's it. Have a good rest of your day. Uh, enjoy your weekend. If you get Cyberpunk early, congratulations. Hope you enjoy it. People are saying that the combat is good. I, I am skeptical. I don't think it's going to be bad, but we shall see.